Alright, mic's on. Everybody say something for me so I know that I can see you on my screen. Hey, Demon's your boy. Weiler? Vogar Check the Goat Rider. Alright. Welcome all to Old Bones and Grim Tales. My name is Brad Sutherland and I will be the Dungeon Master for this campaign that we are starting this evening. I'm here with three of my closest friends, Mr. Ian Stapleton, Weiler Taylor, and Justin Haynes. Say hi, guys. Hey. What's Ooh. going on? <clears throat> How's Subdued it going? highs. Subdued highs are good. So, we have uh, decided to move our podcast campaigns to online campaigns. Biggest reason for this is so that this guy over here, here, uh, Mr. Justin Haynes, can play with us because he lives in Nevada. That's also why we've decided to do our streaming at midnight, even though it's 1240, technical difficulties and such. Um, <clears throat> we're going to be streaming Fridays going forward at midnight. And then on Mondays at noon, we're doing a segment called Grim Talks, which will be a episode recap, along with kind of a roundtable over the interwebs discussion about random topics, uh, nerdy topics, stuff like that. <clears throat> but we're not here to talk anymore about that. We're here to play some D&D. So are hey. we ready? Mm. Let's do it. Let's go. All right, let me check one more thing here. <clears throat> We're looking good. We are live. So let's begin. <clears throat> the campaign is... Oh, there went Jay for a second. The campaign is set in the continent of Alora, on the world of Creatorum. Our tale begins far to the east of the capital city of Yardun in the Yardun province. Ian. Hey. Mr. Daragul, would you like to introduce your character for us? Yes. I am going to be playing Daragul Call. Uh, he's going to be a half-orc uh, with, a, with a dodgy backstory. <laughs> he's a bit of an edgelord. Um, gray hair, brown, brownish red eyes, uh, olive green skin. Um, big buff guy. He stands 6'8", uh, six, I think. 6'5", six, 6'8". Six, big guy. fella swings a big sword. <laughs> Is that pretty much it? <clears throat> yeah, there's not a lot to him. All right. Daragul. Daragul. You sit on a down tree amid the dead creatures you have slain. They resemble swollen spiders with no eyes, and the legs are white and hard as bone. You have slain many of these creatures in the past months, trying to figure out why they are here, along with many other creatures of the dark. You were sent out here by the head of your church, Roderick Brom, in the hopes to find a solution, but none you have found thus far. As you pull out your mortar and pestle and begin to grind the last of your devil's root, you realize something odd. At every one of these encounters with these creatures about your feet, there is a burnt, desecrated willow tree present with a deformed version of the two-faced coin symbol of Azaran. You paid little mind to this, this one in particular, as you've seen many. But in this moment, as you look over toward it, on the eye, there seems to be a pointed nail of some kind that's been hammered into it. And dangling from it is a chain, and on that chain is a black key. <clears throat> I want to walk over, and uh, I'm curious. I'm going to grab this chain. So as you stand up into the muck and the dark green blood of these creatures, as you can kind of hear, there is a storm about, heavy rain, but you begin to walk over. You get up close to it, you can see the key, it's right before you. Okay, I want to reach out and grab it. You reach out and grab it. Nothing happens. It's a dark black key. It's about eight inches long. Circle on one end, and then the actual kind of key shape itself on the opposite side is square with three grooves kind of in the bottom, like the teeth. Three teeth. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I uh, show a curious look, and then I'm going to stow it in my bag. You stow it in your bag. What would you like to do at this time, Daragul? It's been about three months that you've been out here. Uh, you haven't checked in with Brom. Uh, in that mm -hmm. time. Uh, currently, though, you're close to 300 miles away from the capital city of Yardun. You're on the edge lands around Bespur. 
Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a bump of that crushed devil's root first right. and foremost. <clears throat> All right. And uh, I'm gonna get walking, get in, get looking for what I'm looking for. So you look about, and you take a quick tally of the creatures, and the numbers are around 13 or so that you have slain this evening. And it mm -hmm. is late, by the way. Uh, okay. Far past sunset. You take a bump. Go ahead and roll for me percentage dice. Fifty-nine. Fifty-nine. You get that instant feel of adrenaline. And you were tired before this, but now you feel as though you could stay up all night. Oh, and you yeah. begin to walk into the muck. In what direction would you like to head? North, south, east, or west? As you pull out your compass. <clears throat> Can I ask you which way I came from initially? Do sure, I come from you Yardun came, or across from Yardun? You travel along the tradeway, but indirectly, mostly in the woods looking for these creatures. So you came from the west into the east. Uh, you're probably a half day out from Vesper. Uh, currently, you're north of the tradeway. <coughs> I want to continue east in the woods towards Vesper. All right, and you do. Keeping a watchful eye, I would assume. Go ahead and give me a survivability check. <clears throat> That is a natural 14 combined with 2, 16. <clears throat> All right. You continue on. Uh, Vogar, Justin, would you like to introduce your character? All right. I play Vogar the Goat Rider. I have a pretty slender build for a dwarf. Uh, still pretty stout in itself. Uh, and much shorter. Very actually <clears throat> close to a half in itself, which is why mm -hmm. I actually ended up Picking up a ranger. <laughs> yeah. As a ranger. Uh, I'm accompanied by my best friend, a goat named Beatrice. <laughs> yeah. That's all also, I have for now. Uh, yeah, you're also with a companion named Thala. Oh, yeah. A young elven woman. Oh. Mr. Vogar, you sit in the back of your wagon. Beatrice is in sight near the campfire, though keeping that ablaze at the moment's kind of hard as the recent downpour has just been kind of gross. You look down at your bruised and battered fists, and then back up at Thala, who is doing her best to cut your hair and shave your beard. I think I've done it all I, right, I, she says. Go ahead. As she reaches for my beard to start shaving. Mm -hmm. she, she reaches up. Ah. Kinda, that's one of my pride and joy. You wanted long, this? Long, blonde, braided. Yes. Very nice beard, yes. God. Has to go. And she kind of grabs your beard and tugs it toward her and begins to kind of chop it off. So what's the plan now? Where are we going to head? Get as far away from me as possible. I think you want to talk about... Do you want to talk about that? And she gestures down toward your hands. No. Fair enough. Rather not. Uh, as you say that, Beatrice kind of looks up. He's kind of laying down. Head perks up, and he looks over towards you and cocks his head. And shakes it, and then puts it back. What is it, Beatrice? I'll, uh, you, shimmy you, my way over. You kind of start going over, but Thala is walking with you, trying to finish the half-cut beard. Uh, Beatrice kind of mimics it. Again, but he looks toward your hands and then just back toward the ground and acts like he's sleeping. Or she's sleeping, I apologize. I think he's mad at you. She'll be okay. Her little pet. Yeah. Gotta carry us all the way to Ardune, so he better not be mad at you. She'll be fine. Well, maybe we should have to head out tonight. We're only, what, an hour or so from Vesper? Anybody's going to be looking for that dwarf who died? They look in the outlying lands. But we don't have a lot of coin, Vogar. Maybe we pick up a couple along the way? Make them pay. I don't know. What do you, what do you think of my disguise? Do you think it's ink covered hair well? <clears throat> Over the next 15 minutes or so, she finishes. Do you want the, the, the beard completely shaved? Yeah, completely gone. That way there's like absolutely no way they would even think I'm a dwarf. She, yeah, she completely shaves the beard, 
And then what about the hair? Tear. Yep, you've, you've uh, cried a little, and she just smiles all the while. <laughs> little uh, Frodo Baggins, kind of a chop medium. Okay. Kind of okay. like it's like awful looking. Right. No more beautiful blonde braids. All right. Sad. And then uh, what color was you looking for? <clears throat> Zoom in just because the ink could probably go just black. Jet black. Maybe we get in the um, the wagon to do this part, or the rain's gonna make it run all over your face. And maybe you sit under the canopy as we ride, or I can drive. One of the two. As long as Beatrice allows it, do it. And <clears throat> you guys begin to pack up your camp, and you go into the back of the wagon. It's a it's a two uh, it's two wagons attached, and then your goat Beatrice. Believe it or not, is actually strong enough to pull this dual wagon for reasons. But you get everything ready, and you start to head off in the rain. Go ahead and roll me a survivability check, but Fala is going to roll one with you. She got a 17. Fala is doing much better than me. We got a 13. Okay, so you're just kind of helping her, kind of being that backseat driver as she's in the front trying to go maneuver through the muck. It takes you a little while to get out of the woodland proper here and then back on the tradeway. You're far enough from Vesper that you feel as though you're slightly more safe. You just got to watch out for them patrols on the road. So, Weiler. Yes. Please introduce your character. <clears throat> My name is uh, Honest. Uh, I'm playing a human of sorts. Uh, I have jet black hair. Uh, kind of a little untamed. <clears throat> My skin is... It, it, it's not... Uh, I want to say like a light very light purplish hue almost like i'm like just super pale yeah okay uh i have uh, i'm kind of covered in a like a robe and clothed up to where like nobody can really see i'm hooded i have like a pretty large hood over my head you will be soon we'll say let's go ahead oh. and dig into your intro here if you don't mind Oh, yeah. Your eyes flitter open, Honest, and you can taste the muck that has found its way into your mouth. You try to push yourself upright, but are finding it hard to, you know, get that strength to really push yourself up. But you manage to raise your head to avoid drowning. And quickly, the prior events flood back into your mind. The fight against your sister, the Grandmaster's tears, and the laughter of the old drow man. You can see the bodies, they're strewn all about the area. And the buildings, they are burning. Some of the bodies are disappearing and reappearing like flickering fireflies in the night. You can taste the iron just by breathing in the night air. So, oh, okay. just to not confuse you, you are picking up at the very end of your backstory. <clears throat> Oh, okay, okay. So what do you do? Uh, I try my best to stand up. Go ahead and roll for me a strength check. Your Most of your body and torso is actually sunk into this mucky water. There is a thunderstorm brewing overhead as lightning hits very near to you. Uh, I got an eight. I have an, an eight of two to strength. You're having, <laughs> you're having a hard time pushing yourself up, but in the distance you hear a... You can hear through the rain, kind of the the footsteps in thick water and muck. I applaud your efforts. You made for a very good vessel. You turn and you can see that old drow man. Though typically he walked with a hunch, he is straight backed and looks much younger. But it is that old man. The one that never gave you his name. The one that just trained you. You son of a bitch! Now, 
That is not the way to talk to me. Do me a favor. Try and stand, making a fool of yourself. I attempt to try and stand again. Yeah. It takes a little bit of doing, but you do eventually get <clears throat> up. And as you do, you see that in his right hand there is a chain. And behind it, it is attached to Hope. And he is dragging her through the muck. Again, I would like to thank you for everything that you have done. Do know that I will return and we will continue the festivities, but in due time, I have other things to get to. If I were you, I would run. Those of Cinecraven Mills will be around for a few more short hours. They may come looking. And he kind of points around at the chaos and the flames. <sighs> I'm like... Take a deep I breath. guess I'm kind of... Yeah. A few steps back. I'm like st staggering... <laughs> You are trying to like get my composure. You're very exhausted. He just smiles. Maybe that way. And he points behind you. Run, boy. You're not needed anymore. Not now. I'll kill you for this one day. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. And he turns and begins to walk. The chain connected to your sister is bound all about her unmoving form. And as he walks, he slowly begins to flicker, something that you're used to seeing. And in a moment's time, he, along with the chain and your sister, are gone. Where you stood up and you took a couple steps back, your foot catches something and you fall over it into the muck, but you stand, and there on the ground is Eximus. He looks like he was in shock when he died. Half of his body is flickering in and out. What would you like to do, Honest? I'm sorry I ever doubted you. And I just kind of stumble my way around. You start to look around. Is there anything in particular you're looking for? Anything you're wanting to do in this time? <clears throat> uh, kind of like a walking stick to kind of sure. keep my composure. Sure. Many of the monks did carry such things. It doesn't take you long to find one of, you know, from one of your fallen comrades. You take it, and it's keeping you upright. Uh, you do notice that you have a rather large gash on the inside of your right thigh. And with all the muck and stuff in it, it's going to need some healing to avoid infection for sure. It's already starting to throb a little bit, and you feel dehydrated, nausea, kind of nauseated. Uh, you're not sure, you know, if it's just the cut or the events, but you don't feel great. But you can move. Um, so, like, am I wearing any clothes right now, or am I just, like, shirtless? Uh, you were, what were you wearing whenever you sparred? Just your kind of, uh, normal, just your kind shorts, of normal monk robes. And then yeah. kind of like your loose tunic. Uh, the tunic's yeah. ripped. I mean, there's not much of it left. The shorts are still there. Um, some of the buildings are still intact. If you wanted to look around, you might be able to find some fresh clothes. Uh, you just gotta, some of the stone buildings aren't, you know, they, they are broken down, but they're not on fire. All the wood buildings are on fire. So, you want to do some investigating? Uh, yes. Sure. Go I want to just try and find like a. Mm -hmm. You know this really well, like the out every worst stuff was. So, investigation check with advantage. You go looking around. <clears throat> uh, fifteen. Fifteen. It takes you a little bit of time, but you do find some clothes that are not so wet that will work. Uh, you find some uh. Bandages that, you know, may staunch this, this wound a little bit, uh, though they are wet and slightly mucky. So, not good for a long, long time, but uh, you do your best. What would you like to do? And then I'll, as soon as I, as soon as I get clothed, I'm going to start kind of limping my way away from the scene. Okay. 
So as you begin to head off, do you head into the woods or do you follow the road south that will lead to the tradeway? Both will. If you head through the woods, it could be more dangerous and take a little bit longer, or it could be shorter depending on, you know, how well you do. Uh, I'll go tradeway. All right, so you start to head in that direction. With that, we move back to Vogar. Several hours later, you're a good distance from Vesper. You are tired from the night's events. Um, by the way, this is just about six or so hours after the incident. So you're coming down from being drunk. You've kind of taken a short nap. You've uh, bandaged your knuckles best you can. I see someone, Logar, out on the road. Does it look like patrol? Uh, just one. Like one of the monk types from the monastery. Hmm. He's limping. Got a stick. Think he's he has any one. gold on him? Well, if he does, then, uh, you know, he can pay his way. Uh, you get within about 100 yards or so. Uh, with her sight and you being a dwarf with dark vision, that's why you can make him out so well. But you do get up and you look. Um, honest. It's been yes. a few hours. You've had to go through the woods at some point. Uh, whenever there's been patrols past, you've been trying to avoid any kind of suspicion. The smoke, the flames, uh, they're far behind you. The rain is a little bit more calm. But you do see a wagon coming up. But this doesn't look like a patrol wagon from Doroth Rock or anything like that. Um, do you have dark vision? Yes, I believe I do. Okay. Uh, looking, you see a wagon, yeah. curious sight, because it's being pulled by a goat. A large horned goat. And it's coming up, slowing down. You see a elven woman, short blonde hair. When the lightning strikes, you can catch the gleam off of her nose. She has a rather large piercing there. You need a ride, she says as they get closer. And as you look toward her, you see someone peeking out from behind her from the wagon. If I could, please. I would, uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Look hurt? Where are you headed? Uh, honestly, that's a good question. Hmm. We're headed west, of course. Probably to Ardoon. Um... Would you be willing to be a paying customer on this wagon ride? Uh, do I have any gold at all? Uh, with your investigation check, you would have been able to grab a small pouch. Would you like to look in it to see if there is any coin? Yes, I would. You look in, you start rummaging around, and you find two silver pieces. Uh, I have two silver. <laughs> <laughs> Thala turns towards you with a grin. He doesn't look hurt. It's too silver. How much do we too have? Too silver will do. Oh, that easy then. It seems my compatriot here is in a nice mood this evening. You can hop in the back. Maybe get some rest. Uh, and, like, I try to, like, hold out the pouch for her to take. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's trying to reach down. You're having a hard time. You're kind of like getting around the goat, which, by the way, kind of mirrored your movements and was pointing its horns at you. It looks a little feisty, but Thala kind of, calm now. Calm now, Beatrice. And you come by and you hold up the pouch. She takes it, looks in it, sees the two silver, hands it back to the... Uh, what you're looking at, it, look, it appears to be a short kind of stout halfling male. Uh, kind of short-cropped black hair, clean-shaved. This is Vogar, by the way. I'm Thala. Honest. You gonna get in already? <laughs> yeah, just... Get, just uh, get, give me a moment. Oh, I'll, God. I'll step down and give him a hand. I, <laughs> we need to be on our way. He gets down. Uh, how tall are you, on uh, Vogar? <laughs> Uh, I have three nine. Three foot nine. <laughs> three foot nine. So this uh, child-sized halfling comes down. He's he's pretty strong. He's kind of helping you along. He's kind of pushing you up into the back of the wagon. Um, 
there's some supplies back there, some like bags and stuff, but it's pretty sparse, but it's comfortable kind of as you lean up against them. Try not to get any of those two at. You don't mind? Honest, right? Hell of a name. Yes. Yes. Um, well, try and get some sleep. Um, we're going to push on through the night and the wagon begins to move. I like I, I <clears throat> as soon as I sit down, I just doze off. All right. Uh, do I notice anything uh, about him in his right? That... Looking at him, uh, being of a military mind from your past, he was limping pretty hard on that right leg. You could see some blood soaked through the pants. Definitely looks wounded. Uh, looks very pale, though he has this kind of purplish hue to him. Um, like I said, it's it's dark out, but with your dark vision, after a long time, you get to be able to discern certain colors. Uh, kind of in that grayscale with the shade, you know? So, odd hue to the skin, limping, um, doesn't seem to be carrying a lot other than that pouch. That's all you're really getting. But, uh, let's, uh, move on here a bit. You guys continue on. Now, Deragul. Hey. You've been walking for a while, my friend. Mm hmm Walking mm -hmm. for a while. You've started to slow and kind of been weaving and wobbling about. You were hearing things from behind you. You're used to that sound. It seems like more of those creatures may be out hunting. Oh. You're not quite sure of your location. The rain has got you kind of backwards. My, uh, my, sh uh, my armor can uh, tell me which uh, direction true north is. With is that, that uh is that, that a free action of sorts or sure sure with that you do know where you are you were heading uh east correct yes yeah so as you were heading east you the woodlands start to grow more sparse you're getting close to the tradeway kind of the curve from vesper that goes down mm -hmm. the road there you think you're so getting I'm kind close. of breaking into the mm -hmm. the more yeah okay you uh you start to hear the cracked wood and the scurrying from behind you. It's starting to get more intense. Um, you've been up a while. Mm -hmm. You're on your devil's route. A little more riding, riding the coattails of the devil's route. It's very wet. A fight would be kind of sucky right now, but you're always up for one. But what would you like to do? I'm going to push forward um, at a more stringent pace to see if I can't separate myself from the, the noise behind me. Okay. More kind towards... At, a, at like a jog? I, yeah, yeah, right. and I'm kind of picking up um, that we're kind of breaking through the actual deep forest into like sparse trees, and yeah. So I'll move out towards more towards where I would hit the <clears throat> the actual tradeway. You begin to jog, mm -hmm. and then you you have do you have dark vision? I do. All right. You look off to the right and then far behind, and you can see those creatures. They're jumping from tree to tree. Mm -hmm. Probably a couple hundred yards back. Some of them are hitting the tree limbs and falling to the ground. They continue on, other ones bounding over them. You're starting to pick up their pace now, seeing you move faster. Go ahead okay. and roll for me a uh, dexterity check. Okay? Oh, that is a 15, 17 minus 2. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're bounding. <laughs> You jump I'm a over, big lumbering boy. <laughs> <laughs> you jump over an overturned log. You duck kind of a low branch. You continue on for a little bit, then you hear them kind of get caught there in that small choke point. You continue on for another 15 minutes or so. You're starting to get tired, but then you can see and hear something ahead. You break through the tree line and have to literally stop. Bogar, Thala, you guys are talking. All of a sudden, a rather large humanoid comes running out along the tradeway, Thala pushing or pulling Beatrice to the left, you guys going off into the muck, banging up against a tree. <laughs> Look at those eyes. Uh, banging up against a tree. Uh, Dara Ghoul, you came through and you almost ran right into a wagon, a double wagon that was being pulled by a goat. A goat. You come up short, it kind of wrecks over to the side. You don't see a lot of immediate damage. What do you guys do? What the hell? <laughs> My... <laughs> Maybe I sort of stand there and stare at the wagon. Are you going to just sit there? Are you going to come help us? 
it's I who needs the help. And I turn around and I like I wait because I know they're coming. You turn and you're just standing there. And... Everybody's just kind of uh, Thal is just looking at you. Uh, honest, you were woken up. Woken up suddenly. You kind of get bounced around the back of the wagon. You hear muttering, uh, muttering outside. Vogar, what are you doing? Checking on Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice is okay. She was dragged down into the muck. She's kind of sunk in a bit, but she's pulling herself out. You want to get down and help her? Yeah. You get down, you unlatch her, you're kind of pulling her up. You notice that this half orc man is just standing, looking back from whence he came. Just standing there. You. What are you looking for? They are coming. Just, who's there? You start to see shadows in the forest line. With your dark vision, you see spider-like creatures, but large. They're heading in your direction. Honest, what are you doing, bud? I'm like trying to posi- I'm try trying to get up and walk around and like try to figure out what the hell's going on. You you <laughs> want to go out the back or up through the divide in the second? I'll go out the back. You go out the back, you come around. Vogar is helping his goat onto the, the roadside. You see a tall, orcish man is back to you. He's looking into the forest. As you look around with your dark vision, you see spider-like creatures, but very large. They're skittering through the trees, and they're almost upon you. Thala stands. She reaches back behind her and pulls out a bow. I think we're in trouble here. Features stand ready. All right, and with that, <laughs> let's please roll initiative. <laughs> Let me know whenever you're ready. Vogar has 12. Vogar has 12. 13 minus 1 is 12 as well. I got an 11. Hey, look at us. <laughs> look at you guys. Honest got an 11. Uh, your companion's going to share your initiative order, Vogar. If you're okay so we're with all that. going at the same time. No, absolutely. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and then we're going to roll for Thala. <laughs> nice. She got a 20. Ooh. Ooh. Thala. Yeah, look at Thala's her. Thala's going to make us all look like a bunch of pansies. Two quick Double shots. Schmuck. You see two of the creatures getting really close, Deragul, but two arrows fly one by one ear, one by the other. Colliding with the two that are almost on you. I guess I should make sure they collide first. They do both hit. Alright. Interesting. As the two arrows go flying by your ears, they hit the bulbous, eyeless mass of these creatures that you've came to calling bone needles. They hit them, they stop moving, they slide into the muck. It is now everyone's turn but honest. Vogar, Deragul, <laughs> the goat. What would you guys like to do? Looking in front of you, Deragul, you see three more kind of coming up behind it. Vogar, you see the same. There are ones in the distance to the left and right, but they are kind of out there, just kind of seeming to wait. Whoever uh, would like to go out first. my arrow. All right. Shoot. Uh, well, if you guys don't. Yeah, go ahead. Go, ahead, go, go ahead. right ahead. There's three in front of you. Middle left, right. You kind go of to strafe left. off to the side. You're looking at the one on the left. You let your arrow fly. Oh. Uh, Ooh, that's they hit. Sixteen plus. Oh yeah, it's four. Oh yeah, yeah. twenty. Unnatural. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. It hits it. <clears throat> All right. Dark. Uh, seven damage. Seven. You hit it, it hits the bulbous mass, seems to come out the other side, but it is still moving yet slower. It's probably a good 20 feet away from you at this point, only about 10 feet away from the man in front of you. Anything else with your turn, sir? 
Uh, I'll just tell uh, Beatrice to stand ready. All right, so she is now kind of flanking your side, getting ready. Deragul. I'm going to push towards the one on the far right. You push over, kind of moving to the right a bit. Those arrows are getting awfully close, and you don't know these people. It's true. I want to strafe as far right as I can to try and separate myself from this beast. As you pull off to, to, to get uh, distance from it? Mm, well, towards it, but yeah. kind of like... Yeah, I get what you're saying. You strafe yeah. off to the right, kind of in a, uh, in a circle pattern here, mm -hmm. uh, giving everybody room. The two that were really close to you, the one that wasn't wounded, they kind of slow and they're kind of mirroring you. You come mm -hmm. off to the right. Do you want to get in melee range with that far right one? I do. All right, you come up close. They seem to get ready. They're about to jump towards you, but you attack. Ooh, Natty 1. Natty 1, what are you using? <clears throat> uh, great sword. Roll for me the die 6. A 1. Really? Wow. Uh, it's really wet out tonight. You're a little wary. <clears throat> you take the great sword and you come in for a kind of sideways slash, trying to hit them both. But in doing that, you didn't see the large tree that was right next to you. You hit it, it bounces, it falls from your hands into the muck below. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what else would you like to do, sir? <laughs> um, nothing. I'm you've gonna... used your movement, you've used yeah. your action. That is your I turn? Swear, I swear aloud. You swear aloud. You all hear the orcs say something in orcish. Orcish. <laughs> Honest. There is a fight going on. What do you do, sir? Uh, so how far are they away? You're up on the wagon. You're within yeah. You're within a turn's movement speed to them. That's kind of how I'm going to... Since we're doing this online, I'm going to go by, like, turns of movement speed, okay? Just, I'm not going to get gotcha. too caught up in your 17 feet away, stuff like that. Just want to try and keep it moving. <clears throat> gotcha. you, can get to, uh, you can get to any of the three. I'm going to kind of, like, uh, get in front of the, uh, kind of get to the other side of the wagon, and sure. then I'm going to hold my action for if any of them gets near me. All right. Uh, Dara Ghoul, the two that were in front of you as you dropped your sword, you kind of instinctively go to hunch down and get it, but are kind of hit in the chest by them running straight on toward you. Uh, the first one rolls a 17. Hits. The second one rolls an 18. It's not good. Not good. Uh, all right, so you take some damage. <laughs> I rolled double ones. That's crazy. One, two, three, four. So four points piercing damage overall. The one hits you low, the other hits you high. They start to dig in those bone-like legs into your body. It stings. I need you to roll for me a constitution saving throw. You can feel, and you felt this before, that syrupy poison sneaking into your body. Pure 20. Pure 20, you resist it. Yes. You were not poisoned. That is good. Uh, the third one is going to head up toward you, Vogar. Uh, though your goat kind of stands in front of you, and they kind of uh, collide with one another. Go ahead and roll for me an attack for Beatrice. We'll say that she was kind of holding her action. Okay, so uh, 13 plus, I forgot what her, uh, uh, well, that pulled up. Uh, well, she's got the bracer, so it's like a 13 plus 5, I think. We'll, uh, All right. I don't have it. We're going to call it 5 for this session. We'll look at it later. Um, she has a good strength. And this is the one that was wounded, too. All right. Is she ramming? Yeah, she literally right. kind of takes off, gets good 10 foot, and kind of meets it in the middle, stopping it from getting to you. The horns hit it straight on, and it does... What am I rolling here for that? Sorry, I'm afraid to pull up my sheet. Are you? Uh, just go ahead and roll for me a die six plus seven. <laughs> no, 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 that's the attack, so it'd be plus two? Uh, four yeah. plus two. Four plus, it's six. a die four plus two? I changed it to a die six, so a die oh, no. six plus two. Oh, no, I rolled a four. So oh, four okay, two, okay. Six, six. It jumps up, literally impaling itself onto the horns of Beatrice as it starts to shake wildly all right with that Fala is going to take some shots toward you Deragul. oh 
both hit. Four, five, oh my. 79, five, 15, two shots. Wow. You kind of feel the thuds of the arrow's impact, and it gets really close. You feel that prickling sensation like you just about got shot by elven arrows. Uh, the bony-like appendages that were kind of in you have pulled out. They seem like they're about to bound off of you. Uh, it is Vogar and Deragul's turn. Deragul, go ahead. Oh, well, I want to pick up my blade. Okay. So they're still on you. They're not off of you yet because it's not their turn in initiative, but you reach down and you grab the blade. Whenever they hit you, they kind of knocked you on your ass, but you're kind of picking yourself up. You grab the blade. Um, can I pry them off me? Sure. Is you want to use your action to kind of... Well, you're going to take the blade down yeah, kind yeah, of in like, between you and push? Sure. Yeah. Uh, for that, go ahead and roll for me a strength check. Would you allow me to roll athletics? I would. Just contested athletics or strength checks here. 23. 23. Uh, 17 and 6. Combined, they got a 17. You kind of take the blade, pushing it in uh, through some of the bony appendages, and you push them off. They go back about 5 feet. We'll call that your action. You still have movement yes. speed if you want it. I'm going to move back towards the group a little more. You move back toward the group as you turn and start to walk. You see the goat has one of those creatures impaled upon it. You see the oh another man. I don't think you've noticed the uh, the human yet, but there's another man at the back of the wagon seeming to be ready for anything. You can hear the scattering in the trees behind you to your left, but you're back with the group now. Uh, Vogar. All right. Uh, is it... The one impaled within melee range or still... Uh, the uh, one that's impaled is not moving. The one that's impaled on Beatrice, not moving. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. not moving. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> actually, I'd like to move, take my action to get on top of the wagon. Sure. And shoot for the closest one. Sure. So, you kind of jump up onto the wagon using your movement speed. And both of them that uh, your uh, this orc was in combat with are both right next to each other. About to head towards you guys. So, you, you can hit each other. Right. Both of them uh, are... They have arrows sticking out of each. Both of them are wounded, just so you know. We'll call I'll it left. Say right. the one to the left. Sure. Left. All right. Ooh, that wasn't good. Ah, seven. Seven to hit is not a hit. Anything else with your turn, right. sir? Ah, uh, no, sir. All right, honest. Nothing has came All within right. melee range of you yet. There are two of these creatures that are heading up toward the party in front of you. But the trees are kind of swaying. There's more of them out there, but they haven't kind of came into, uh, you know, the sight line yet. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to limp uh, to the yeah. side of... Yeah. Uh, You're moving at kind of half movement speed now. Uh, you limping up toward the party, or what? Yeah. You're limping up toward the party with your stick. Anything else with your turn? <clears throat> uh, I can just hold my action for if anything comes within melee. As you guys kind of converge on one another, the two of the creatures kind of come up short. This is not odd to you, Deragul. These things, they're smart. They hunt. They start to skitter about. They're backing off. That's their turn. Uh, Thala looks around. We shoot them? You guys can reply if you like. Oh, okay. I don't want to break in this shit. <laughs> she's Locked yeah. She's up. just kind of like, do we shoot them? And then quickly kind of lets two fire at them. They're drawing back. She's on fire tonight, dude. She's got to be able to roll over it too. Uh, as they turn and begin to kind of back up, the arrows hit them hard, and they kind of get plunged into the muck there, unmoving. As you guys are looking around. You see the shaking in the tree lines. But none of them are coming forth. Dare I go, well, it seems like they know that there is a fight to be had here, but it's not one that they have the advantage on currently. We are now... They know we'll beat them. We are now out of initiative. They're, re they're retreating. To help Beatrice get that creature off. Thala comes down. Things are not very nice. 
Oh my. And she kind of points and there's this green sludge like stuff all over Beatrice's head. She's kind of pulling it off. Drops it. What are these things? Never seen spiders this big. I've been hunting them in the forest. That's your day job, is it? Basically. Huh. Holy men? She kind of... Do you... do? You, she says that kind of you've been fighting... Do you wear the <clears throat> chain holy symbol? Yeah, so I'll wear like a small <clears throat> small chain with a tiny little uh, symbol on it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she kind of gestures to her chest. Holy men? Yeah, we're working on it. Uh-huh. Well, holy man, you want to help us get this wagon out of uh, the muck here so we can get away from these things? Seeing as how I uh, put it there, I might as well. Huh, good. And she uh, kind of walks past you, Honest, and slaps you kind of on the shoulder. Good fight there. Good fight. Way to stay out of it. She continues walking past. Kind of put like a grunt there. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> as I like lean on my staff, I'm like... Ugh. Bogar, kind yeah, of go ahead. Sorry, worn out. Bogar, back wheels busted. Ah. We have any replacements left? Let me check. You go looking. Uh, you do have one replacement left. Yes, you kind of re up every time. You know, you only ever get one. You got that one spare. <laughs> you never <laughs> buy four or anything. You got plenty of room, but you don't do it. Uh, is is it a Work or a half work that broke it? Uh, the way he's talking, the way he's standing, this is definitely a half work. Uh, yeah. Uh, you half work, are you going to pay, Will, whenever we get where we're going? Since I see it as you broke it. Maybe you'd like to pay for passage off west, too. Where are you headed, big guy? By the way, my name's Thala. Nice to meet you, Thala. I'm headed towards Yardun. My Isn't name's that? Daragul. Daragul. Interesting. Daragul. Daragul. Well, if you're paying, we can get you there, as long as you can lift this wagon up so we can change the tire. You too, Vogar. Hey, honest. Wanna help me? <laughs> I'll try, yes. Ugh. All right, then. So, how do you guys want to do this? It's um so it's like off on an incline kind of yeah like off in a ditch. Oh, She's kind of looking at it, hands on her on her sides here, looking at all the men around, waiting to see what you guys do. Beatrice, you might... gonna give me a hand. Beatrice nods his head, her head. Sorry, hard not to do. Come on, girl. <clears throat> <laughs> so uh, she comes with you. What would you like to do, sir? Uh, so uh, the the front end uh, is it still pretty damaged from whenever I unhooked her, like where I can. Her it's, back up and you actually... could you could hook her back up. Uh, you can put kind of a uh, an extension line out on it if you wanted to, and then uh, so she could try and pull it out of the ditch. So you mind giving a bit of a push, half work? I think I can do that. Honest, I got it. So I can see that you're wounded there. I'll give it a push. <laughs> so she. Thank uh... you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, you, uh, Daragul, uh, lift up on this broken wheel here on this side. I uh, will keep it up and kind of push. Whenever you're ready, Beatrice. Go ahead and roll for me a strength check for Beatrice. So just a die 20 at 5. 5. Uh, 13. Would you like to aid her? Uh, yes. Go ahead and roll with advantage, or just actually just roll strength check of your own. Oh, well. Finally, I actually rolled good. There you go. Plus two, unnatural. You guys begin to pull. Daragul, you are pushing but holding up the, the broken piece here as not to break the axle. Honest, you're kind of keeping an eye out to get it onto the tradeway. Mun just sitting there and holding that for a little bit. Think you can? I can do that. All right, then. Actually, and she gets up into the wagon, which adds a little bit of weight to it, begins to rustle around, comes back out with kind of a, a timber of sorts, and puts it underneath, kind of like a jack. Maybe this will be good, and you just kind of stable, keep it stable. Honest, I ever changed a wagon tire? Well, you're gonna uh, learn. You're gonna learn. Come on, boy. Kind of gestures uh, okay. over. Okay. <clears throat> you guys. Now we'll uh, learn today. 
You kind of, <laughs> you guys are gonna go through the motions of changing a wagon tire. Uh, Honest and Thala are going to be doing that. Daragul, you're just kind of making sure it doesn't fall on them. Logar and Beatrice can be doing as you wish. Floor's on you guys. What are you guys doing? Uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna assist her with trying to, to set this t- new tire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Go ahead and roll for me a dexterity check, followed by an intelligence check. What are you folk doing out this way? If you don't mind me asking. Uh, Thala uh, dex looks over 15. toward you, Vogar. 15 dex? Give uh, me that intelligence roll. Trying to get to Yardoon. 14. She's kind of walking That's... you through it. You're doing well. Uh, trying to get to Yardoon as soon as possible. Coming from where? Why? Making conversation. Did you ask uh, a lot of questions? You don't have many answers. <laughs> Still technically a stranger, and you did wreck our cart. And you haven't mentioned you had any gold, silver, and copper. I haven't taken over my job yet. You actually do not have any coin on you. Wasn't worth carrying in the woods. <clears throat> Great. Uh, I, uh... You hear that? <laughs> free rides. <laughs> Giving free rides. Maybe you can pass. I, uh... when you get there. <laughs> I can compensate you once we get to this city. Mm. How's that? You work in Yardin. A lawman of some kind? Yeah. We could, we could call me that. Good. Good to have a lawman with us on the road. Yep. And uh, uh, as she says that, I kind of like break out the small mortar and pestle that I have. Okay. And uh, start to crush down some more <laughs> devil's root. You all, uh, those that are looking, is honest, you've got the tire on. You guys all come around to the front. The rain has lessened a bit. You watch as the half orc, Dara Ghoul, pulls out a small mortar and pestle, takes from his pouch this root of some kind, puts it in it, and starts to work away at it. What you got there? <coughs> Dinner? <coughs> Oh, it's, it's dinner, all right. <laughs> Sorry I asked. you never seen this before. Well, it is dark. What is it? It's Devil's Root. She uh, looks bewildered. Is that really a thing? You tell me. And I extend kind of the... The, the mortar? The mortar, yes. She looks over at it and sniffs it and kind of jerks her head back. What do you do with it? Take a bit of that. Rather and lace your, lace your nose with it. Ah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I it's am. worth the ride. Do you have any ale in your... Might I have ale? No ale, and you're out no of way. spirit. No, of course. No ale. We have a little no how about, gold. How, no how about ale, you, sir? Free ride. <laughs> I extend the uh, the mortar towards uh, the gentleman at the front. Toward Vogar. Mm-hmm. He uh, extends oh, no. the okay. None for you, little man. I have you know, I'm just as tall as you are. <laughs> I puff my chest out. <laughs> <laughs> I take a little bit of the devil's shirt. Go ahead and roll for me percentage dice. <clears throat> <laughs> oh no 32 32 mm-hmm. you take it and it's gonna be one of those times you just kind of feel it mm. and you start to wobble your way to the back of the cart just past everybody who's looking at you bewildered and you crawl in the rest of you it's not long before you hear the heavy snoring of Deragul well, I guess we're taking him with us. Some holy man. Is he really <laughs> asleep? And Thala climbs up into the back and smacks Deragul just kind of on the backside. He didn't even move. He's still snoring. <laughs> Looks toward you, Vogar. She does. Filthy. A bedroll. 
<laughs> and uh, I, I kind of like look at her as like, and I, I try to attempt my best. To, uh, should I roll for that or my best? You, you attempt your best what? Sorry. Uh, whisper. Uh huh. Go ahead. <laughs> Go, what are you going to say first? Oh, uh, just the fact that it's, uh, it looks better on us that it's not just us heading to Yardoon at the very least. She, you just kind of nod toward her and she comes up to you and you mumble that to her um, in passing there. Honest, roll from, what's your passive, Honest? You're in a bad spot. Uh, 14. 14, roll for me a, roll for me a stealth check, Bogar. We'll use that for this instance. That works. Oh, awesome. A uh, five. A five? Uh, so you said it looks better on us that we are not traveling alone, DR dude? Yeah. You just, you, honest, you do hear that muttered. It looks better on us that we're not traveling alone, DR dude. So. Well, I'm honest. You're bunking with him back there. Sorry. Oh, it's, it's fine. <clears throat> I just need to rest this leg. I'm going to continue on into the morning, probably tomorrow evening. We're about three and a half days from Yardoon. Um, probably plan on camping tomorrow, but I'm good for another, another few hours here. All right? All right. Beatrice, you ready? Onward, Beatrice. All right, Beatrice. Everyone gets in, and you guys continue on. Is that a good spot to take our first break? Yep. All right. I feel like it. We'll be right back, everyone. Yay.
I'll see if I can't share it. Yeah, go ahead and share it. We are back from our break. All right, guys. You guys are traveling along the tradeway. Who all would like to rest in this time? Thala is driving. I think I'm probably I'll unconscious. Rest. Yeah, you know, you're unconscious. <laughs> Honest, you're I'm going, resting. You're going to sleep. What about you, Vogar? Uh, am I sitting in the front with Thala, or am I in the back of the wagon? You're in the the sec the first wagon, but you can first see wagon. Her. You can see her. The so there's two wagons kind of together. Uh, the one right behind, or the one that's attached to where Beatrice would be in front, there is smaller than the one in back. So only about five or six feet as compared to the ten feet in the back. <clears throat> so kind of caravanning. So you can see uh, her. Starting to feel my hangover and. I'm starting yeah. to get a little bit of itch. I started digging through my uh, brewing supplies to see if right. I can get a you gonna, you gonna get something going? You're going to go make a, uh, oh, what do they call it? Uh, a wart? Still? Gonna make yeah, a wart. Yeah. Yep. All right, go. Uh, so for this, it's a die 20, proficiency bonus. And then do for me, you're in the cart, you're bumbling around. Give me, a, give me dex. Die 20, dex check with proficiency bonus. 12, I shouldn't see, 2, 14. 14. You're getting it going, sir. How long would you say it usually takes to uh, brew your, are you making ale, like beer? Yes. How long uh, does it usually take for you to make your, your beer? How long do you set it up and do everything? Mm. <clears throat> uh, how long are we going? A couple you gotta, hours? Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably uh, I'm just getting it set up for camp uh, right okay. before I start uh, cooking it and everything. Just getting all the supplies just ready. Just getting it all ready to go. Sounds good. So it's good. ready for me first thing in the morning. Sounds good. <clears throat> With that... Daragul. Yes. The dreams have come. You... Are standing in an unfamiliar place. You look around and the ground is gold. The mountains are gray and crag-like. The smell is sulfur. You see creatures all about. They're shadowed. It's hard to make them out. You hear voices, conversation, but it's Almost like static to your ears, if that makes sense. You wander in your dream or this nightmare, whatever they are, and you see a bare chested drow man walking. There is a small impish, like maybe from old storybooks, creature walking next to it. You seem to be able to move around freely, but very quickly. What would you like to do? <clears throat> Are they speaking? I, I heard something being spoke, but it was static to my ears. Yes. Can I decipher that it was those two? Yes. Like echoey okay. static. You're a distance away, but you look toward it, and it's like tunnel vision. They mm -hmm. solidify. I move closer. Am I... Uh, Sort of like incorporeal, am I like you look walking down as though I'm incorporeal, translucent, but shadowy. Okay, not so it's like, like a dark... not, not like a radiant light. Like a dark like a like, like a dark light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get closer and investigate this drow man and in, in, in figure. What what languages do you speak? Uh common and orcish. Okay. The impish creature is muttering in a tongue unfamiliar, but the drow is speaking common. I have come to speak to her, I have. No, I am not afraid. Yes, I am here for the two. One male, one female. I will take them, yes. Is Fury present? Ah, of course she is. They... Begin to walk in silence after that. What do you do? And um, um, so do I see, is it like black all around me besides this? 
or is it I'm just locked in on them? And You're locked in on them, but if you tear your vision away, the kind of wide expanse opens up. It's hard to navigate. Like, you have to focus on a point to solidify it and stick with it. When you pull okay. away, you just see this, this crag rock of gold and gray. You can mm -hmm. feel the it's heat. It's kind of like all a blur. Yeah, but you can feel the heat, which is unsettling. It's intense. I'm going to stay focused on them. As you stay, and, uh, yeah, continue correct. to follow. <clears throat> As you do, the scenery opens up and almost jumps forward to that of some kind of indoor cavern. There is this crag rock that almost seems worked in some way that comes up to this pinnacle, this large throne. You see a giant of a female figure, humanoid, looks human, but with red tinged skin her arms are out on these gold sides of this throne and before it on a pedestal you see children babies naked they are sitting there and they are screaming the drow man walks forward and begins to pick them up one at a time wrapping them in brown rags the female figure speaks but it hurts you can't make out the words you hear a shriek in the sky above and look up and you see that of something you've never seen before, only in fairy tale books. That of a dragon, but made of bone and darkness. The drow man smiles and turns and walks away with these children that are screaming in his arms. And you wake up. <laughs> I look around. I'm in the back of the wagon. You are. You can hear the rain as you kind of jolt awake. Honest, you feel something and your eye opens. Bogar, did you take a nap in this time? It's been about eight hours. Oh, yeah. All right. Guaranteed. You can see the sun. Well, the sunlight. It's kind of hazy, overcast. There's still rain. All looks back. Not waking up now, huh? I suppose I am. Do you want I, uh... me to take over? She looks very, very tired. I think maybe we find a place to camp out for the day. Get our bearings. I'm not feeling well. Is that all right with everyone? Yes. Mm, it's fine. I'm merely a passenger. All right. I mean, Vogar, you can push on if you want and ride till dark. I can sleep in the back. Just want to get out of this wagon sooner or later. I'll go ahead and sit. <clears throat> you gonna take uh take over or uh you guys want to set up camp? I didn't hear you there, sorry. Oh uh, I'll go ahead and set up camp. Okay. That way I can actually get the brewing supplies going. You're fiending a little. Alright, we'll find a place. She is going to roll. All right. Another hour or so goes by before she finds a place where she can kind of pull off into the ground that's a little bit more hard, rocky. You're not going to sink down in it. You can get the uh, the wagons off on the side of the road if you wish. And uh, you guys do. She gets out and stretches, walks off into the woods to take care of things, and returns as you guys are all kind of... Gathered around, making camp. I open the floor to you guys. Uh, I gotta check my uh, wound <clears throat> to see how it is. You, uh, do you do it? Where do you do it? No, I just in, in the. Okay. Okay. In the back of the. You start to wagon. Peel it back, uh, Deragul. Have you left the wagon yet? Um. Yeah, we've stopped. Right. Yep. Yeah, I'll exit the wagon. Okay. You uh. You begin to peel it back, and you look at the wound. It's about six inches, probably about an inch or so deep. It was a, it was a good, good slash. It is bruised around the outside and on the kind of inside where you can look down into the, the cut itself. It's got this yellow-green tinge. There's fever all about it. Um, you have kind of a pounding headache. You feel nauseated, and you feel very thirsty. <clears throat> Does uh, do we um have any uh 
Water. It's raining. Open your mouth. <laughs> you do have some water. Give me, give me a moment. Um, couple seconds go oh, no, by before Dalla, she brings you. It. Okay. She like goes and walks toward the water skin, but then you cut her off and go do it. <clears throat> Just mess. What kind of name is Honest anyway? An honest name. Just an honest <laughs> name. <laughs> I see what you did there. <coughs> as I as take I it, do the water is good. Uh, I take it. I, I take a swig of it. As you take a swig, uh, it's it's odd because it's almost as if you're drinking sand. It's it hurts your throat to swallow, and you notice that you feel some swelling up around your neck. Could I have maybe have noticed this? He's you've noticed that he's in pretty bad shape. Uh, you also being of military mind, we'll say. Uh, there's a pretty dark, nasty smelling wound. Your sense of smell's pretty adept. He doesn't look great. You don't smell <laughs> right there. Oh, thank you for that compliment. Um, I no, took no. a pretty, uh... Come here. Uh, oh, okay. And, and I, I like... <laughs> Start limping over <laughs> toward him. Daragul just stands there waiting. I limp over to him. Like, I'm like... Uh, yes. He gets up to you. I give him a few hard sniffs. and You, uh, can, you can smell infection. For mm -hmm. sure. Okay, so I'm gonna look at this wound, right? Uh, he reaches down and starts to pull away the bandage. What do you do, Honest? I just, I let him. I'm too tired. If, if, <laughs> you kind of so defeated, like, you don't even care. <laughs> you lean back against the wagon and slide down. Daragal, you kind of hover over him. You begin to pull it away. You see this cinch, six inch gash. It's almost like it was done by a serrated blade. Uh, mm. There's fever. It's got this yellow green tinge to it. It's starting to look a little rotty. I, um,. I bite my thumb to the point of bleeding. Okay. And I shove it onto his kind of crossways across his wound. And I'm going to use my lay on hands. <laughs> you watch him bite his thumb and blood pours from it. And he just thrusts it into your leg. It's excruciating pain to the point where you almost black out. It was meant to be a painful experience. <laughs> All the rest of I'm you see like, this long uh, follow, but no one moves forward. Uh, but you feel warmth. Uh, what are you doing with your lay on hands? Are you restoring HP um, or are you... No, I'm going to either neutralize a poison or a um, disease of some kind. That's what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to spend my, my bank of five that I have. Okay. You do that and immediately <coughs> you watch as the, the redness recedes a bit. The skin pulls together a bit. It's still open, but smaller, and you don't see the rot. It's still there. It needs to be tended to probably for the next few days. But you've definitely stopped the worst of it. It was, defi it was, it was definitely a, a disease or a, a poison of some kind. Rebandage that. Keep an eye on it. Uh, thank you. Got some you, fresh man. ones in the cart back there. Maybe not put the muddy dirty one on it. If you would be so kind. Well, have the lady do it, I see. Just no, just hand me feelings. the bandages, I'll do it. She Ladies do have soft the... hands. <laughs> just, any... just hand me the bandages, any... I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> she just shakes her head and walks away. <laughs> uh, she goes and gets the bandages and brings them back, tosses them down in your lap. <clears throat> Thank you. As I get back into the wagon and uh, start to rebandage it, mm -hmm. and you're feeling slightly better as well. <clears throat> at this point, you guys have set up camp. the uh, The rain at this point has stopped. I know it doesn't sound like it, but give me a moment. Finally, fire. Do you hear that small one? No rain. Are you talking to? No, I'm talking to the goat. 
The goat kind of jerks talking. its head up towards you. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I can start making ale. And you do. You begin going through your process. No need for roll here. You did well earlier. It's going to take some time. But is that what you're wanting to spend the latter, latter half of this afternoon doing? Uh, that and uh, tending to be true. All right. <laughs> that is what you are doing. Dara Ghoul, do you have anything that you would like to get to this evening? This at late afternoon. <clears throat> no, I uh, say I've got one more use of uh, my Devil's Root, and then I'm out. Yep, right. you got one more. I'm going to stave off for now. <laughs> you kind of say outwards to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> like looking around for like answers or something, <laughs> like... Paula, by the way, has went into the back of the wagon and is sleeping during this time. Honest, do you try and get some more sleep? Or do you uh, yeah, okay. but uh, I try. I'm, I'm like, I'm still kind of shock in shock. Should I say? You are. Yeah the that voice of that old drow man is just still kind of resonating with you and what happened. So, with that, if there's no other conversation to be had, the time, the hours, they pass by. Night quickly comes. Eventually, after a long day, you guys start to get a little wary. Your brewing is going quite well. Um, I would say... So, how long did we decide it was going to take you to do it? Oh, I mean, I... the wart came, he heated that shit up. making it there, heated it. This should be ready by night. Yeah, yeah. So you have something that is passable, drinkable by the time that night comes. Probably 9 or 10 in the evening, Thala eventually wakes up, comes out to join you guys around the fire. Good evening. All that. We have fun today, boys. Of course. Oh, about all that. Mm. Mm, loads mixed, of fun. Mixed feelings here. <laughs> Only a couple more days to Yardoon. Anybody got any like fun to, plans? Go ahead. Oh, I'd like to walk up to Honest and like give him a pair of my clothes. Like, would you like some dry clothes? <laughs> he, he walks up and holds out a uh, some halfling sized clothes with a big some old toothy grin. Clothes. This. Um, I don't think these would fit, but thank you. I appreciate the offer. I don't know why they wouldn't fit. We're the same, about the same size. Now hold it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just a wee bit taller. <laughs> I'm, I'm like 5'10". <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Literally like waist height for you. <laughs> All right, well, I try to make a nice offer. Right, no, and I, I, I appreciate it. It's just I'm, 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 I appreciate it. I'm just a... I'm a little tall for it. <laughs> I wasn't trying to be rude or give you any disservice. <laughs> uh, make my way over to the brew supplies little test. Mm -hmm. It's not bad. You've made better, but it'll work. No <sighs> dwarven red, I can tell you that much. Small one, what do you have there? Ale. Would you like uh, festivities? It seems. Please. Uh, all gets Much up better than the... that stuff you uh, <laughs> put in your nose. Yes. Well, <laughs> if you're ever uh, tempted, <laughs> I sort of like gesture to the <laughs> to the mortar. Let me know. <laughs> no, no, I'll be fine. All comes back with some wooden mugs and hands them to you, Bogar. And I. Uh, Crack the tap. Mm -hmm. Honest? Oh, hell yeah. Will you partake? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. And I, I'll walk it over. Can't take my clothes, but you <laughs> <laughs> No clothes, but you can take my old bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you guys begin to drink the ale sitting around the fire. Everyone's I do make some for Beatrice as well. She's licking it out of a small, shallow wooden bowl. Oh, Very nice. Happy. <laughs> Very happy. 
Even the goat drinks <clears throat> it. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's how we met. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, would love to hear the story of that encounter. Ah. It's a good one. Come on, Vogel. Not to... Give us a tale. Come on. <laughs> oh, no, no. No <clears throat> tales for the night. Tonight, we drink after those wretched. Speaking of that, should we be worried that they're going to come after us? It seemed like they were following a half one. Yeah. They they followed me for some time, yes. You're Where? Law, lawman from Yardin? I kind of do militant work, just not for a militia. You so, know? more of a freelancer than an actual... Yeah, you've kind of got it. I do independent work. Is that well, is like stare off in the distance? <laughs> is there a name for this organization that you do this militant work for? Are you <clears throat> solo or? I work for the church. Church. I knew you were a um, at least on the surface, a holy man. She says. Not all good deeds are done good. <clears throat> Wise words. Wise words and <laughs> Wise words and bad grammar. And I kinda like chuckle and like start drinking some more of the ale. Oh, <laughs> sounds fun to me. There are a few <laughs> holy places and you said you were from Yardun and are working from there? Yes. A few holy places there. Um Ophius. Gorand seems to be thinking. Balanchar, Azaran, looking and at you. And when she says that, I kind of grab the uh, the small necklace and I kind of like like flick it when she says Azaran. Ah, ding, ding, ding. Interesting. Very um, brute force church. I, so I do thought. things. I do things they don't want to do. You know, mm. it Let's wouldn't see. be good for the church to be seen doing these kind of things. See. She looks over toward you, Vogar, just kind of raised eyebrow. <clears throat> just kind of a simple, like, head nod, kind of symbolizing we'll talk later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she retreats into her mug. Make my way over to Beatrice and kind of like sit in between as she's like looking down. Mm hmm. And ask her how her ale is. She uh, nuzzles up against the side of your face when you ask and then goes back to it and finishes it off. He probably likes it, it seems. <laughs> she is also a goat, so. Maybe <laughs> she was a little loose with those head movements. <laughs> I, I think she. <laughs> Uh. <clears throat> so, anything specific that you guys would like to do this evening? We've made some ale. You guys are drinking. Mm -hmm. So. So, gentlemen, you like the ale? How does my piss? It's pretty good ale. <laughs> <clears throat> I've, paid for, I've paid for worse. <laughs> Oh, it, it's good. <laughs> Thank you. How's honest? How's that uh wound feeling? Yes, how is that wound? Mm, better, at least I think. Good. No, I, I haven't checked. I'll check on it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Give it time to reseal. The, the infection, along with the drink, you are very weary yet again, for sure, honest. <clears throat> and, uh, how, how far off the road are we? Um, probably 20, 30 feet or so. Not very far. Didn't want to go too far because of how muddy the ground was. So, you guys drink your ale. 
you have sparse conversation, but eventually you grow weary. Well, um, I slept most of the day. I'll keep watch tonight. I don't need to sleep much. I should get some sleep. Maybe do it in the wagon. Uh, if I get a little laundry, maybe we take off middle of the night, catch some ground. I'm uh, pretty well rested from my uh, my nap earlier. Well, you can stay up and tell me tales. Maybe I can. Hmm. And I give her like um, the the like wink, the look. Uh huh. She she gives she smiles, but you know it's the one of those condescending. <coughs> you have yeah. no chance, kind of smiles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, You've I seen you. it before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. I like, well, you can talk. Me, I'm going to drink. I make my way back and forth. <laughs> By this time, you can tell it. I'm kind of starting to stumble a little bit. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, you are, you probably, are a small man. Uh, by several drinks in, I'm probably gonna not make it to the wagon and like pass out. Like, just snoring, <laughs> just, like, kind just of, on uh, top of Beatrice, just like yeah. Both of them drunkenly walk toward the wagon. Beatrice kind of collapses, and then Vogar trips over her, rolling back to her, and they begin to snore softly. Honest, what yeah. do you do? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. I just kind of I, I lay in the <laughs> in the wagon. You go get in the wagon. What was you saying, Daragul? He uh, he loves that goat, doesn't he? That he does. That he does. Interesting relationship, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How um how long have you known the small one? Uh, hmm, two seasons, I think. Hmm. Not terribly long. Uh, He's good folk, though. She just kind of looks toward the flames. So, uh, what are you all doing out here? Well, we usually go up and down the tradeway, trying to find passengers or those that need things going from one end to the other. Make some coin. Currently heading back to Yardoon. Uh, got some friends there we're going to meet up with. Carol, insight on that? Sure. It is 17 plus 2, so 19. You can consider friends a loose term. Okay. She said it with kind of a sarcastic flair. And you? How long have you been out here? How long have you been out here? Uh, three months. Uh, three, yeah, say. It's been a while. <clears throat> I've been out this way for three months now. Out in the woods? Looking for them things? Aye. Kind of a bummer. <laughs> you should have been the one in the woods. Glad I'm not. Elven types like us do like the woods, but not enough to fight those kind of creatures on the daily. Mm. Mm. Probably why Velenthos hasn't been here in, what, 50 years? You're a man of the cloth. Well, I know that more than I. <laughs> I, uh, I think you know that I'm not exactly a man of the cloth. Yeah, I was picking up on that, but you know, can't read a book by its cover always. I do a lot of dirty work for, <clears throat> for the church. It's what I'm good at. Ah, well, sometimes the pretty faces are best kept in the field. And uh, I blush a little bit. <laughs> I'm not so used to getting compliments. I blush a little bit. <laughs> I suppose they do. Yeah. Well, I'm quite awake. I'm going to take care of um, business. She stands up and starts waddling out toward the woods. You can just stay there, by the way. That wasn't an invitation. I don't need an extra hand. No help with your business. No, I can wipe my own ass, I promise. <laughs> she goes heading out into the woods. I make a foul <laughs> joke in Orcish. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, she s says something in Elvish. Uh, you know, just starts kind of saying things. <coughs> so, Daragul. Yes. Chilling at the campfire. Anything special mm -hmm. you wanted to do?
part of me wants to rip into the last bit of this devil's reap a part of me wants to hold off uh i would say roll for me a uh, I, I, I might crave it yeah yeah roll yeah. for me a, roll for me a wisdom saving throw oh i'm proficient in those too let me see it's gonna it's be 10 plus a good thing. 15 four, so 14 for. oh four wait, wait. 15 14 14 yes uh you're on the you're on the edge there so you you feel mm -hmm. very compelled to finish it off knowing that you're so close to yardoon and that you'll be I able to re-up yeah you'll be able to re-up we get there um, maybe tomorrow yeah so it, this one's up to you you feel like you really want it and you might be uh hey, do some withdrawals. I, hey i failed to save didn't i yeah you're close this one this one's a touchy one so what do you do <coughs> i break out the mortar and pestle you and i to... uh I take like a long look at the uh, the fire at yeah. the campsite, and you do. And as you're mortaring and pestling your devil's root, those flames they be you begin to see images in them as you're preparing it. That of that golden landscape and those gray, craggy mountains. You have these, you know, visions or and stuff mm -hmm. at times. Very common for you. And as I kind of like, I have it on my finger there, and yep, I'm very concerned. Maybe even a little, a little frightened. Yeah. Please. But in the end, I go right up. back to it. Yeah. Go ahead and give me that percentage roll. <clears throat> Twenty-eight. 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 You hit it. And you immediately feel that overwhelming heaviness dragging you down. The adrenaline is far in the background. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. want to find sleep. And as your eyes close and you begin to fade, you hear a scream in the forest. Vogar, Beatrice, honest. Huh. You awake and you're hearing now the echoes of a scream. You don't know if it was a nightmare that you're waking up from as you were drinking heavily. Honest, you are sick. It's almost as if you fell asleep and then heard a scream in your mind and your eyes... <coughs> uh, what, what, what was that? Anyone else hear that? I heard that. And I sort of stand up kind of abrasively. <laughs> Beatrice, are you okay? Oh, <laughs> you, by Where's the way, the Daragul, are very disoriented. I had, did I have that bloodlust from my uh, my lineage? In my yeah. No. Essentially, you you went down. The adrenaline came. You thought you heard the scream, and you're up, but you're disoriented. Mm -hmm. You're as if you were heavily drunk. I wield my long sword or my great sword. Certainly, I pull it kind out. of pull it out, and you're wobbling around. Mm -hmm. Bogar, you're kind of still drunk. It hasn't been that long. The half orc is kind of bumbling around around the fire, actually stepping in it and coming out. The <laughs> great sword's kind of going about. Do, do I notice uh, Thala miss? You do notice that she's not here. Yes. Right, Honest, if, did you want to come the... out of the wagon? Yeah. You come out of the wagon. You see the same thing that I described before. Uh, Daragul's kind of walking around. He stepped in the fire. The flames are kind of dimming. Uh, Vogar's making his way up. The Beatrice just kind of is snoring. I just kind of look at... Just can't handle her. <laughs> 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 right. Come, then, small uh, one. Leave the goat. He says very slow. I don't slurred. know why you keep talking to the human. <laughs> and uh, which direction did that scream come? I was uh, rest. <laughs> it came from that way, and I kind of like point you, and then like you point, I like, drift. And you kind of drift around, <laughs> and you you literally do like a one eighty. You're just kind of pointing. Uh, can I roll a survival to see if I? Uh, <clears throat> I was about you, to say, uh, could I, uh... Yes, but with disadvantage. Yay, I knew that was good. We be. have uh we have a we have someone that's drunk, someone that's high, and someone that's very sick. <laughs> I rolled two fourteen. We, we what have, are the odds of that? That's not bad. So <laughs> uh fourteen your, plus four. Your, so your actual can. racial lineage it kinda kicks in, right? Your 
the adrenaline's pumping, you're pushing through it, the haze is fading, and you try to remember the echo of the scream with a 14, you start to move out into the forest past the half orc that is spinning around like a top. Honest, what do you do? You see him push forward into the woodlands. I try to follow. Okay, you start limping your way ahead. Deragul. People I, walk past I you. lumber forward. You're kind of like hitting up against a tree. Mm -hmm. Pushing forward. Kind of like, to... I've got like a great sword, like kind of like on my shoulder. And I'm like leap, leap, uh, reaching out for trees, like trying mm -hmm. to like. Mm -hmm. You begin to make your way in with that survival check. I would say it's not hard for you to um, spot the footprints. With your dark vision, the disturbed earth, it'd be easier if there was a torch. You're getting out of the line of sight of the fire. What would you like to do, Vogar? I'll go with the... Uh, to light the torch. No rain. That good stuff. It's not raining. I'm trying to... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just kind of get down. I'm going to keep trying to follow the tracks. And I'll actually yell out uh, for Thala. You yell out, Thala, it echoes into the woodlands. There's no reply. Give me a... As you're looking around, I need an investigation check. This, oh. unfortunately, is going to be with disadvantage. I would say if all three of you are looking, though, I'll let it be a straight roll. Yeah, for <clears> sure I'm looking. Yeah. You guys are like, yeah, like, honest, you're kind of like up there with Daragul, and you guys are walking together at this point, both kind of hobbled in your own ways. Bogar, you're looking about. What was your? What was? Uh, who wants to roll the investigation? Anyone else can do it. If... <laughs> I'm not proficient in investigation. I know none of you are. Are you? Uh, I rolled a Ooh, six. Hold on, let me. <laughs> let me double check. I'm. Mm, I am not. I have a minus one to investigation. <laughs> yeah. So I'll, <clears throat> I'll roll if you want me to roll, but I'm minus one to investigate. I have a plus one to investigation. Hey, you, you're so, better off. You're the whoever, best whoever was yeah. the, yeah, whoever had, uh, you being, so you just, you're kind of sick. You're not impaired. You're just kind of woozy. You're feeling better. So you would be the one that's like more keen on the eyes here for more reasons Ooh, than one. Unnatural <clears throat> 20. Oh, wow. Didn't expect that. All right. Okay. You guys start to push forward and did you light a torch, Vogar? Yes. Honest, you are looking around kind of everywhere that the other two in front of you aren't, right? And you see kind of the sheen of something, like the firelight hits metal of some kind. You look toward it, and you see the smattering of blood in the grass. And you see a nose ring. You see flesh around it. I pick up the the nose ring. Mm -hmm. I'm like dollars and dollars in danger. Well, I'll kind of like storm up. Let me see. Take you, it from you. You take it. It is. It does indeed appear to be Thala's nose ring. It seems to have been ripped from her in some grievous way. You can see a small trail of blood that eventually tapers off. The direction is from where you're at northwest. Uh, so in that case, like start setting it and start picking up pace okay. the blood starting to push through all right with that we do need another survival roll as you're pushing in trying to keep an eye you do see tracks but they uh, still disadvantage <clears throat> yes sorry yes you see tracks but then the tracks kind of turn to drag marks and you see a second set of tracks but large kind of almost like Pointed toe, triangular feet in a way. Like I got the, the like out of game, like reptilian but large. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You see that, and then you see drag marks. What was the survival roll? Thirteen. Thirteen. You continue on, but eventually they stop. Both of them just stop. Look up. Looking up, there's the canopy up, up above, the moonlight shining through. You're in kind of an opening. With that 13, you, I'm consuming you, you want to push on and keep looking. And you do. About an hour and a half goes by. Nothing's coming up. 
You, orc. Can you s smell? And you did, her, uh, you, you did have her send for a while, but whenever those the tracks stopped, mm -hmm. it was just gone. As soon as you took a step further, it was as if it was not there anymore. Her scent. It's disappeared. How? And I back up and I can... I, I get like... Ooh. Hold on a second. Uh, Hold on a second, guys. Did we have a crash? Can you guys hear me? Uh-oh. Uh, really <laughs> <laughs> Just one second, um, everybody. We're going to take a quick break. And like John and
All right. Oh, let me maximize this. That probably looks funky on stream. Welcome back, everyone. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Also, we have uh, turned Justin's mic sensitivity off, so there'll be a little bit of audio hum, and we apologize for it. But I'd rather hear him than hear him cut out all the time. So, as uh, right before we went to break, it seemed that Thala had went off into the woods. You all heard a scream and went to look... For her, you found her nose ring on the ground, and a blood trail, and then tracks and drag marks. But then the tracks, there was a second set of tracks that looked large and almost reptilian. You guys continued on for an hour <coughs> and a half and have found no trace. We're picking up now, and you guys are kind of in a clearing. You're a good ways from your wagon at this point. I'm assuming you took Beatrice with you, right, Jay? Or, uh, Bogar? <clears throat> well, technically said she was sleeping, uh, but I mean, I would like to have her with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, she was sleeping. That's right. So she's back yeah. at the wagon. Thanks she for is. thanks for letting me know. Honest. Are you my Yes. You are. I'm honest with your passive perception. You smell something. Almost like... Decomposition. Does anybody else smell that? Daragul, you're starting to get it. Bogar do. smells his armpits. I don't think that's you, a small one. I'm not small. <laughs> <laughs> he looks up. <laughs> Honest, you begin to look around? Going for that smell? Uh, I'll roll an investigation check. Well, you kind of, with your passive, you kind of smell it and you're going in the direction. Oh. You, with your, everybody has dark vision. You see something on the ground form. Small. About the size of a dwarf. It's up ahead. <clears throat> you all uh, can I find a rock ahead. anywhere? You can find, like, a, like, a, like, you can, you look around for a rock, you find a... Kind of a piece of a stick. I toss it towards it. Nothing happens. Uh, I still did have a torch lit from uh, when I was mm -hmm. following the blood trail. With that, you get a little bit closer and you do see an unmoving form on the ground. You can smell the rot. I walk up upon the form. You just kind of walk past everyone. By the way, Darago, you'll f you're feeling pretty good right now. Uh, Vogar, Ooh. you're kind of fighting off the, uh, the drunkenness and fighting through the, uh, early onset hangover. Honest, you're feeling better. You're feeling better. You guys move up on a, You guys are all tired, by the way, though. <clears throat> but you move up on it, and it does seem to be the deco a decomposing dwarf form. Hmm. Can I tell if it's, uh, male or female? Uh, just looking at it without kind of moving the body, it's hard to tell, as most dwarven women do have beards, too. You had to guess, probably male, though, looking at the figure. Can I roll perception to see maybe how long he's been dead? Perception? Uh, mm -hmm. I would let you roll investigation, investigation. If you wanted to get down and, uh, mess with the body. Yeah, yeah, I'll do Do that. some doctrine. By the way, during the break, everybody leveled up to two, just so everybody knows. Mm -hmm. Investigation check. You get down. 16 minus 1 is 15. 15. You start to... You pull the body over. You start to look. 
with the how wet it is out here, it's hard to tell how long this thing's been dead, but probably a couple days. You see claw marks. You're seeing marks as well, almost like uh, it's been bitten. It was bitten several times. Fought across the face, you can see the bone underneath. You start to kind of dig around, and you do find a coin pouch that you pull out. There's a hunting bow off to the side of this corpse. Uh, there's also 12 arrows. Just as you're kind of looking around. You see it in a quiver. I, um, I don't need these. And I, uh, I grab the quiver and gesture towards the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the short one. And those were a little, like, five <laughs> feet away. Almost like they were tossed from the body. Mm. And as you kind of go over and you collect the quiver of Ogar, you see something else on the ground. Something you haven't seen in a while. Um, you pick it up and it's it's been broken in half, but it seems to be a firearm of some sort. Kind of like a scatter mm. scatter rifle. Uh oh. Common dwarf military weapon. But uh dry rotted at this point, broken. <clears throat> I believe we have a military dwarf here. And I show them the uh the dry rotted uh, rifle. Mm-hmm. And thinking of that now and kind of looking at the garb, it looks like one of the Dorathrakian uh, rangers. You would notice this too, Vogar, though maybe you wouldn't let it be known. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. And I sort of throw the firearm back down on the ground. Okay. I found this. And I throw the, uh, the coin to... Uh, Volgar. Okay. <laughs> make us make us even for the wheel. Should cover it. Nah, look well, into looking it. into it, you see eleven silver and four copper. <clears throat> it's better than the human. <laughs> all, uh, all two silver over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two silver. <laughs> so you are all kind of taken aback as you hear a howl from behind you, a good distance away. From which we came? Yes. And then another, but echoed, like, back to back, howl, howl. Bogar, you look and you're a little worried because it's back from which you came, and you see kind of the scuttering in the bushes from which you came. <laughs> A couple hmm. moments later, you see Beatrice beelining through the woodlands, running straight for you. Just with a quick look, you can see slash marks down one of her sides. And she just runs and kind of leaps up, like, toward you, like, into your arms. Like, into your arms? <laughs> yeah, just kind of, <laughs> boom. <sighs> what is it, girl? Right you. What you, is it, girl? <laughs> you hear the howls again, but they're closer. And from when I she can... can yeah, go ahead. Oh, can I tell from the what kind of uh, how it may be? Uh, just from That's cool. you can now because you can see the creatures that have just broken the tree line, dog-like, but with two heads. Roll initiative. Uh, oh, oh I did it, boys. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, dude, my roll of one, my initiative's one. negative one. Oh, no! Zero, dog. It's impressive. Hell yeah. What do, what do you win or lose for that? Yeah, what do I lose <laughs> for that, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, DM. <laughs> Give me a moment. Zero. Mm -hmm. Dara Ghoul. I didn't expect <sighs> that. Uh, Bogar. Fifteen. Honest. 14. Random dice roller. Roll me a dice. Yes. Six. <laughs> Three. Thank you. All right. Initiative time. Four. By the way, how, to, how does Beatrice look on the... She, she's wounded, but she's a strong goat. She'll survive. For now. <laughs> oh. 
So but she came through, she ran up into your arms, knocking you over, but you stand, and in that moment's time, you see these creatures leap out from the brush. They are, they look like large dogs. Their fangs are showing, but each one of them has two heads, you see three. And they're bounding toward you. Bogar, you see this. They're about to turn, turn away from you. What would you like to do? All right. Uh, well, so I'll actually kind of like stand in front of Beatrice. I'm like, stay out of this, girl. All right. And I'll actually pull <laughs> both of my axes out. All right. Uh, and I'm actually going to use Zephyr Strike. All right. And I'm going to charge. You charge. Hurt my Beatrice. You I start taking off. They, they are they are page. grouped. <laughs> they are grouped pretty close to one another, all within melee range, <laughs> all within five feet of each other. You run up to the pack. Left, right, middle. All right, uh, I'll just kind of using, shoot yeah. for the middle and right. Okay, because this can hit how? And what's the radius of this? Uh, oh, so the Zephyr Strike is actually yeah. it's melee range. Okay. Uh, it adds an extra one d eight, and okay. I don't have any opportunities of attack, so I okay. can kind of boom yeah, yeah, boom yeah. Yeah, get yeah, yeah. out. So you're gonna do like a slash on the slash on the one in the middle with your action, then bonus action slash on the one on the right. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. That is correct. Go right ahead. All right. So first one. Is a two plus. <laughs> what is that? I think two plus four, so uh, six. A six is yeah. a miss. The axe comes down, but the heads part, and it goes right between them, just grazing the fur. All right. The second one, I'm gonna shoot for. Is that hit, swing at the middle. Yep. Swing at the right. Looks right. wildly. Uh, nine plus four, so thirteen. Thirteen just hits. The axe coming oh. down on the left head of this creature. Roll damage. All right. So, uh, 1d6 plus 2. 4 plus 2, 6. Plus an extra 1d8 for force damage nice. at 4. So, 10 total. All right. And then I would like to boot scoot and boogie. Right, whatever right, the right, rest right, of my right, turn right. Away. Sure. You run up. You miss. The right one comes down into the skull. Act Good. Oh, uh, instead of running towards a group, actually kind of like off to the right. Sure. Uh, kind of spread them apart. The axe comes down and goes through the left head of this creature, splitting it in half. The jowl's kind of slacking there, but the other head stays upright and it's still moving. You take off to the right, the head comes out, but of course no opportunity attacks. You deftly move about 15 feet to the side. Is that your turn? That is correct. Honest. It is your turn. Uh, so they're about to turn away. Yep. Um, uh, I'm. I guess I'll try to be ballsy here. Uh, I'm going to uh move up. Go ahead. There we go. Uh, am I still going at half speed? No. You're good to nope. go. You've been unleashed. <laughs> All right. Ah, yes. <laughs> All right. Cool. Honestly. So I'm gonna. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna move up. You go running up, and then I wanna come up to the one that just got like one of its heads chopped off. Sure. And I wanna come in and I wanna try and land a punch, uh, into the other face. Daragul, you watch as right this now. man with no weapons goes and runs up and punches this canine in the face. Uh, sixteen to hit. That hits. All right. This man so. gives no fucks. <laughs> Ew, that's only uh four bludgeoning. All right. For that attack, but then I'm going to burn uh one of my two key points. Okay. Uh to cast uh to use flurry of blows. All right. And I'm going to make two more attacks, one at the creature and then another one at the one to its right. Sounds good. Here's the first attack, nat 20. Nice. Uh, that would be, unfortunately, only a five because I rolled a one on that. <laughs> All right. Was this uh, on the same the one, second... by the way? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then this one's uh, this next fist is going to the one on the right. Sure. Uh, that's a seven. The one that was that wounded not... was on the right, by the way. Oh, yeah. So uh, this one you're going center? Yeah. Okay. 
Sorry, I was messing with something on the, the streamy stream here. All right, the one that you just did, did you hit? Yes. Uh, er, the first one I rolled a nat 20, the yeah, second yeah. one I rolled a 7. Yeah, yeah, oh, well, the 7 would not hit, of course. Yeah. 13 is what you're looking for. All right, is that your turn? Yes. Okay, sorry about that. All right, you are up there in the thick of things, and these three creatures come bounding around you and start rolling out with some attacks. You ready? I'm ready to die. <laughs> Don't say that, dude. Come on. Oh man. man. All right. Let's see. At least you paid your way. Uh, <laughs> thirteen. Misses. Seven. Oh. Natural one. These three dog-like hey. creatures start spinning around you, but you are deftly dodging as they are doing more damage to themselves than they are to you currently. Wow, they suck. Daragul. Yes. Sir, you pulled out your greatsword, and by God, second time I'm, in a matter of days, you dropped it on I'm the ground. I'm going to use it. Oh, God damn. You rolled a zero on initiative, friend. But All right, so, you reach uh, down, you pick it up. Pick it up? Yep. <laughs> and you're ready right. to go. I had to do a little something right. there, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, hell yeah. It's just wet. It's still wet. You know, yeah, it's not yeah, raining, yeah, but... Yeah, but you are ready, and the they're they a turn away, and they're circling around Honest. I move forward and go back to back with Honest. All right, you kind of go into Even the Even though he's a stranger, things. I trust him. All right, all right. <laughs> go right ahead. What are you doing? I'm going to attack the one on the left. All right. They're kind of circling around, so you got two uninjured ones and then one that is injured. Well, yes. Okay. yes. I'll attack the one that's not injured, try sure, and get sure. damage all the way across not the board. I'm not quite sure which one's which here, but just roll an attack for me. 16 plus 6 is 22. Hits. Yes. That'll be 6, and 3 is 9 plus 4, 13 damage. Nice. The greatsword comes down, kind of chopping off part of the back half of this creature. The back leg is stopped moving. It is limping about, but still alive. Anything else with your turn? That's all I do. Vogar, you come out to the side. You two allies are encircled by these creatures. Beatrice is cowering behind you. That's my girl. <laughs> 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 all right, uh, so the one that just got strike, I'm going to charge at him again, uh, making another slashing strike with my hand axe. Yeah, it comes around your allies in this fight, and the axe is coming in toward the uninjured head. Fifteen. Fifteen hits. Roll damage. Alright. One d six. Five plus two. Seven. One d eight. Fourteen damage. This one comes around, and it sees you, and it actually leaps towards you, but the axe definitely comes across, across the throat of the uninjured head as you kind of sink down it goes over you hitting the ground and stops moving only two left are alive you have a bonus action attack if you like yeah uh basically i'm gonna swing it at the one closest to me mm -hmm. the melee you range. can you yeah. can make sense of them now one the back half it's limping and the other one has is fresh so you can go after either because they're kind of rotating uh the limping one go right ahead uh 13 plus Four, 17. 17? Hit. Yep. Right. That one's five. Seven damage total. Nice. And you kind of, you go after back. those those back legs again, and you actually manage to hit one, and the axe doesn't quite go all the way through, but it does enough to where the back hind leg is just kind of dangling at this point on by some tendons. Uh, it's pretty wounded. Its movement speed is quite reduced, but it's still alive. Did you say you back off? And I back off again. You back off. <clears throat> All right, that was Vogar, honest. Uh, so, are there like two in front of me right now? They, they, there's one still circling around you and Drago Daragul. The other mm -hmm. one is a little ways away and kind of limping off toward Vogar. All right, so uh, I'm going to attack the one that's circling me in uh, Daragul. Sure, sure. Uh, 17 plus 5? Definitely. 
definitely. Ooh, seven bludgeoning damage. Nice. As I just try to, again, you, just another, another. It, it comes I actually up, want to it, go for a left hook. Sure, it comes up kind of like a horse, right? Trying to hit yeah. you with its front claws, but the left hook comes out, hitting it in the chest. You can feel its ribs break, and it kind of stalls there for a moment. And you can actually hear this thing take a painful intake of breath. Anything else with your turn? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my last key point. Flurry of blows on this thing. All right. My character's <clears throat> reckless right now. <laughs> Little. Little. He's wild, man. He's a wild man. Unnatural 20. Nice, nice. Uh, an additional 7 bludgeoning. Nice. So as it came up, crack, deep intake, another crack. Do you have another hit? Yeah. Go right ahead. Uh, <coughs> 6 plus 5. Uh, it's actually, that's a miss. Never mind. It's 11. So crack, crack, and then it, just, it gets just out of the way of the last hit. It is still alive. Is that your turn? Yes. All right. The heads come up and try and snap at you. They jump in. You've done a lot of damage to it. It's attacking recklessly toward you, apparently. 18. <laughs> 18 hits. All right. Hey, I get to do some damage. Three, five piercing damage, sir, as one of the sets of teeth come down on your upper shoulder and kind of slide down. All right. The other one is limping toward Bogar, but it can't quite reach him because it has no movement speed currently. So, Ooh, sucks to suck. <laughs> Deragul. Two wounded creatures. You can smell the death in the air. What do you do? Yes, the bloodlust in my eyes. I'm going to attack the one that's chomped onto Honest. Sure. 14 and 6 is a unnatural 20? For sure. For sure. 5 plus 3 is 8 plus... Four is twelve. How do you take this one out of the battle? I bring my greatsword down upon it, splitting the two heads. <laughs> nice. Right down the middle. Right down the middle, turning it into two dogs instead of one. Exactly. It falls to the ground. Anything else with your turn? Um, I'm gonna move towards uh, Bogar. You. Walk. You don't even have to run. You walk toward him, and you walk up and around in front of this creature that has no movement speed. We are now out of initiative order. What do you do? I look at it suffer under my, underneath me, and I take my great sword and I pierce it down, and I shish kebab both heads into the ground. You give it the coup de grace, and it is now dead. Silence takes over the glade. <coughs> I run over to Beatrice. You turn to Beatrice, and she definitely has been attacked by these creatures. I need Beatrice to make me a constitution saving throw. Honest. I also yes. need a constitution saving throw. Where this creature has bit you, you feel the burn. What'd you get? <coughs> or what'd she 20. get? Nat 20. Hell yeah. Oh, that, that's what nice. I rolled for. Nice. Okay. That's my girl. <laughs> I roll off for me, but... Uh, I got a for 10. Goat, though. You got a 10? <laughs> yeah. You look up toward the shoulder and then where it ripped down. And what you notice and why it seemed this creature didn't latch onto you, the teeth actually came out of its mouth and they're stuck in the wound. You feel the Ooh. burning and you're already feeling very sick, but it intensifies. <coughs> Your max total HP has been reduced by five. So I'm at six. <laughs> Immediately, you guys watch as Honest just kind of crumples to the ground. The wound, as you pick up the... Did you you did you drop the torch when you did the two axes? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so you go over, you grab it, you guys run over, and what you see is there's these long teeth kind of in his shoulder, and they come down. The wound is black and throbbing. You've seen this kind of stuff before, Deragul being a paladin. This is some kind of necrotic injury of some kind of magic. Mm. It doesn't look good. Uh, I'll look up to him like, should we pull him out? I think so. 
I, uh, you want a medicine check, maybe? Sure, you want to roll a medicine check? Try yeah, you've seen lots of you've seen lots of things. Are you wanting to just pull them out, or you want to try to identify this as well? Yeah, I want to <laughs> do both. Count for both. You can count for both. It's it's going to be nineteen plus four, so oh, twenty three. My, uh, you have seen this before because you've been fighting those creatures in the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, you you've seen it and you've kind of named it yourself. Uh, you've been calling it the rotting death. It seems is, as though he's got the rotting death. Yeah, where where creatures have been hit by those uh, those spider like creatures uh, and taken the poison, or now what you've seen with these dogs, what this does because you've had it happen to you before, it it's a flesh eating disease of some kind. It's very rapid. You see people literally decompose within hours and just die. <coughs> he may not have much time left. You see, well, it takes mere so. hours. I told you I was ready to die. I don't believe you're having a rough night. Honest. Ah. Honestly. Let me see. Do I have any ale in my water skin? <laughs> yeah, of course you do. I like I just kind of like you pour put... it on it. Okay, you pour it on it. Uh, honest, that fucking stings. Mm, maybe, yeah. maybe not. Oh fuck. Oh, I don't know. Just, just once. Just once <laughs> fucking today. Can I not just be in agonizing pain? Uh, Brad, I, I look- when I'm, um, after I use my first um, lay on hands and I passed out, would you consider that a long rest or a short There's rest? There's been a long rest up to this point, yes. A long rest? <clears throat> okay. You gonna, you wanna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that and see what happens. Um, again, I'm gonna take my thumb. And you I'm, bite, gonna, this, I'm gonna you bite, bite it to the point of the bleeding. scab. And you mm-hmm. you walk over and stick it in. Yeah. And I... What's different about this one is is it's almost like taking something holy to something unholy. Mm-hmm. Smoke starts to kind of rise up from the wound. You feel this searing pain in your shoulder, honest. But then you oh, watch as, as the black starts to subside. God. It seems like you've definitely <laughs> cured some kind of disease here, my friend. The rotting Told you death, the yell would fact. work. <laughs> kind of like, like roll my fingers, and I'm like, that was foul. There's evil afoot. I think the ale actually fixed it, personally. <laughs> it was the ale. Beatrice uh. nods her head. <laughs> I'm like... Beatrice I'm walks like, over and like licks the wound. Oh, boy. Uh, is that like poor ale on her? <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> I'm just like mm, uh, uh, what well, well at least you fought this time by the way the, ra- the rain has begun again ah fuck <laughs> uh, by the way what does my uh, my hair look like at this point all I have noticed by the way Especially after this fight, now everybody's calming down. Every time you, dare I go honest, even Beatrice, passing glance at Vogar, the, uh, and what was your original hair color again? Uh, blonde. Yeah. The, uh, there's black kind of coming off of the hair and running down his face. Your eyes are kind of stinging Vogar. Uh, his hair is blonde underneath, it appears. (coughs) So you color your hair then. And I'm like, is that like wiping? <laughs> yes. What is it to you? Just curious, small one. Please don't get offended. I am not small. <laughs> I'm just as big as you are. <laughs> In spirit, maybe. I like, I'm going to puff my chest up again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm going to try and help Honest up off the ground. You do. You help him up. Honest, you're feeling you're feeling rough, man. <clears throat> you're feeling rough, but you're up. You find your stick. You're leaning heavily upon it. Beatrice comes up and stands next to you, Vogar. You guys are somewhere in the Willow Woodlands. What would you like to do? <clears throat> uh, Shit. Well, we were looking for Thela. <laughs> I was wondering, yeah. wondering what someone was gonna be like. Well, that's what I was about to say. Do you think these uh? Dogs had anything to do with Thala. Maybe we should track to see where they yeah. came from. 
I suppose that would be best. All right. And off in the distance, as between the breaks of silence, you do hear howling out in the woodlands. Of course we do. <laughs> of course you do. What More you howling. Like to do? Beatrice, what do you think? If uh, if you ever have seen a goat shrug, she shrugs. <laughs> Now's the time. <laughs> she just kind of, just kind of looking around. Say. She just nods her head. Could I roll investigation for maybe used walkways or brush that's been moved? Sure, give me an investigation check. Um, Everything is a little bit harder to track out here with the muck and the rain, but you're looking for traveled pathways. 17 minus 1 is 16. A 16. So you were kind of in a clearing. There was from whence you came, which there's definitely a walked pathway because you guys have made one through the mud and such. Uh, looking around with a 16. Mm-hmm. Um, toward the north, kind of northwest, you do see what appears to be a path of some sort. I mean, something that's been taken often by somebody because all the brush is kind of battered down. Uh, you know, you can kind of see the rocks, the grass has been trampled down, such such and such. It kind of goes at an incline heading up, and there's water trickling down, almost like a small stream through it. But it does look to appear like some kind of a, like a trail, like a trail path. Do you see that, Bogar? Ahead of us. Uh, I kind of like glance. Uh, do you want me to roll a d20, or do you want me to just go with it? No, no, you can go look, and you do see what appears to be some kind of trail pathway. Do you think that could be where Thala went? Possibly. Uh, kind of like, like reach in, like like look at her, like fucking nose ring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just kind of pull it out, look at it, like it's gonna give you some kind of inspiration. Ah, yeah. Honest, you're kind of limping up behind them, looking around, kind of keeping an eye out, making sure no dogs are gonna come attack you. <clears throat> ah, I, w I wonder if I can use Beatrice to possibly try to pick up another scent again if I can use the little nose ring. Sure. That or that or they half work, as I put on my tippy toes. They both can work in conjunction with one another if you're trying to pick up a scent. A and little, I get down, I get down on one knee, uh, crouch down towards the goat. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you think, goat? Give me. Uh, who has the? I'm assuming Ian that you have the higher <laughs> wisdom score than the goat. Um, I would hope that my wisdom's <laughs> higher than a goat, but you never know. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, with that in mind, you wisdom can is 14. Roll for me a wisdom check, perception, okay. with perception. Uh, with advantage. Okay. The first one is two plus two is four. The second one is four plus two is six. <laughs> with six, yes. The, the rain, man, it's putting a damper on everything. It's hard to get any kind of a trail here. You can even you can just barely make out the the rot of that dwarf over in the distance. The rain. It's bogging down in his scent. Do you think we should push forward? That or try again when the rain stops. We did leave our cart not that far away. We did. But how much time does she have? Probably not long, I'd say, as I'm <laughs> now back to this stick and state. I'm, like, thoroughly aggravated. What did you I'm say, like, crippled one? <laughs> I said we don't have long. She doesn't have long. No doubt. He's right, I think. If we don't do we do something. Yeah. Do we leave your friend here, Vogar? No, we push on. All we right. shall push on. Uh, Come, crippled one. Let's go. In what direction would you guys like to head? <coughs> that, you that take that pathway? Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Start trucking up through the water that's running down, up the muddy and rocky pathway. Who is leading? Well, I'll, you, I'll you lead. And, you and the goat? The ranger and, and the, the goat, goat lead, as they have the personal tie to the one that is lost. And I'll, uh, I'll go, I'll, I'll be in the rear and, like, you know, trying <laughs> to help between the, you. Uh, yeah, you're help you're helping him up. along. You're helping him yeah. along. Uh, so, Mr. I'm leading the group, survival check. Do you want to do with advantage if it's with... Uh... With Beatrice, it is with advantage. In the, next couple, in the next couple of hours, it's going to encroach upon a time where you would need to rest before taking exhaustion. Did you say 17? 
That is correct, sir. Roll for me percentage dice. <clears throat> Forty-four. Forty-four, you say? I do say, sir. All right. You begin to make your way up in this kind of trail path that is winding down. You're traveling up it. The water begins to kind of increase in pace, and it's getting harder to kind of walk up. Uh, lightning hits, and from in front of you, you see looming that of a cave entrance. Seems to be like that's where this path was coming from. And there's water just coming out of this cave entrance. <clears throat> uh, does everyone else see it as well? Everyone yes, 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 point? yes. Of course, of course. <sighs> well, it'll get us out of the rain, and it does look like that's the direction a path is taking us. Yes. We should get uh, get on us down for, for some rest. Does that sound good, Cripple? Sounds fine. <laughs> Throwing out the barbs. <laughs> and I kind of like, you know, I got my arm around him, like trying to help him, like, come now, Cripple. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, so you guys begin heading in, I assume? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, you push forward out of the rain into this cave entrance. The opening is about 12 or so feet high, kind of circular. You push in, the wall kind of comes down. Unworked stone all around, but it is wet. You push far enough up, and to the right you see an opening where the water is pouring out through, and then down, you go past it, and find semi-dry earth. Did we light a torch, or are we going in this dark? <clears throat> Bogart? I'll go ahead and light another torch. You light a torch, and darkness is ahead with your dark vision. It seems to go down quite a ways, actually. And as you were heading up, this was kind of into the side of a small hillside, we'll say. And it seems that this cave entrance, this tunnel, continues to kind of head up along this hillside. But for now, you are semi-warm, soaking wet, but there's no water under your feet. Just hard ground. What would we like to do, gentlemen? <clears throat> do you feel that? Ground. I'll take off my very nice leathery boots and kind of dump some water out. Yeah, hits the ground hard, goes running down. <laughs> quite the stench, Daragul and Honest, quite the stench. Mm. Even Beatrice wrinkles that nose of hers. Small on your feet, quite back a punch. Back quite a punch. <laughs> I've been traveling for a while. I'm sure your feet doesn't smell great. Well, maybe they do. And I get kind of offended. <laughs> <laughs> My so. feet smell fine. I feel like every time I, I talk to uh, Dora Ghoul, like I, I kind of like uh, get the Chris Pratt, like Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. like yeah. with the like with Thor. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you talking like that? Talking like that. what? <laughs> this is my voice. <laughs> yep, that's it. That is it. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, Mr. Passive Perception. Yes. You've been in a cave or two in your time, right? Maybe when you were younger, exploring the outside lands around the temple. Typically, quite cold winds kind of circulate through these tunnels and things and caverns, right? What you do notice, before anybody else, is that the warm that's kind of circulating through here, or the, the, the wind, is warm that is circulating through here. Is it just the fever setting in, or is it warm? I thought I felt good on my bare feet. The ground is nice. I think I'll... But as well, and I take my boots off. It is a Frito-smelling time in this cavern. It turns out my <laughs> feet do smell. I'm sorry for them before. <laughs> Apology accepted. As I dump more water out of my boot, too. <laughs> uh, so what would you guys like to do? Pushing on, I'm assuming. Yeah, push, push on. Deep, deeper into this uh, cave. 
you begin uh, to trek back forward on. after putting your boots on. They dried out a little bit with the warmth of the air circulating. You continue forward, and it's pretty straightforward for a while. You travel for 20 to 30 minutes, and this thing keeps going. Um, go ahead and roll for me survival check, Vogar. You're in the lead with Beatrice. You're taking it slow. Your natural heritage is making you be wary of any drop-offs and things like that. Uh, 19 plus 4, 23. All right, so you continue on, not running into anything crazy. With that survival roll, you start to look on the... You're kind of looking, it widens out uh, into a small chamber that continues on on the other end. You look to the left, and you start to see these scrawlings kind of on the wall. Looking at them, like, it's, uh, they, they look like arrows pointing up, uh, circles with X's through them. You kind of follow the engravings, and then it kind of turns into these little, almost stick figure-esque drawings. Um, the scenery gets a little bit more detailed and graphic as you push a little bit further on. Um, like, the, the humanoid figures that are depicted here are kind of torn about on the ground. You see little drawings of fires, um, circular things that maybe are the moon. It's kind of hard to tell. Seems very archaic, old. <clears throat> hmm. Like, as I, I like, kind of, like, put my torch, like, even, like, trying to really mm -hmm. get a good read on it. Mm -hmm. Does this make anything out to you two? Oh. So I'm just kind of looking... Uh, can I roll history? Maybe sure, I, you go over and look at it. You two as well, honestly. Maybe you I've roll seen some history. Maybe like you've seen murals some murals from. Yeah. As you kind of are looking where uh, Vogar is, Darag <laughs> Daragul. <laughs> honest, you begin to kind of walk with it and look. The scriptures or drawings, engravings, whatever you want to call them, they become, like I said, more detailed as you walk. Would you want to roll a history check there? I did. Uh, five minus one is four. All right. Oh, and then honestly, I don't know much. <laughs> uh, can I roll a history check? Sure you can. Sure you can. Uh, 16. 16. So what you see doesn't make any sense. Nothing from your learnings, you know, really point to anything. Like I said, they get more elaborate. And what you see is almost like a drawn walkway. Uh, flat surface, people walking from some kind of throne. There is a pedestal and drawn kind of on it is what seems to be kind of two small humanoids of some kind, almost like babies. There is a picture that kind of catches your eye. It's not, I mean, like I said, that they get better, but still, it's not like you're looking at some deviant artwork or something like that. It's not great. But there is a drawing of Somebody or something with elven features and long hair, bare-chested, and it just kind of resonates with you because of the prior day's events. Just reminds you of that old man. Are there uh, boobies? Boobies? On, are some of the women uh, un unclad? Yeah, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Oh. <coughs> Dargle stares. <laughs> <laughs> and you do kind of see this too, kind of the flat earth, the trail, the throne... Uh, this pedestal with two children on it, and all that. Everyone sees this. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I <clears throat> had a dream of two children. Why would it pertain to this? My you ever just really low. <laughs> you ever just get a really, really bad feeling? All the time. I'm getting one of those bad feelings. More than I care to admit. The hair on there the back some... of your neck, Daragul, starts to kind of perk up. I get like chills on my you do. chills down my body. <clears throat> there was a there was a man. He was a drow elf, and he had some small, impish figure with him, and he was looking for children. Two of them, a, a boy and a girl. There was a chain. Maybe two chains. Someone named Fury. A red-skinned woman. 
And I'm like kind of like talking myself into a frenzy. You, you know? are, like, and at this point, like eyes kind of close. You're really wishing that you had more devil's root at this point. And like I even like look <laughs> into like you know the mortar so, pestle like yep, my my there. parchment. And I'm kind of like I rip, I rip the parchment into pieces and throw it to the ground. You kind of do that, and you turn as you do, and you throw it onto the ground, and you notice something that you didn't notice before. There's an opening in the wall across the way, and what you see freezes you in your place for a moment. You watch as a figure in a white gown walks past, slowly, the face turning its feminine short hair, and then it's gone across the other side. Did you see that? Did we see this? Neither of you saw anything, but when you turn, you do see an opening across the way that you didn't see before. There was a woman. I saw, I saw nothing. No woman. Was there was a dog? woman in a gown. And I, like, don't answer his question. I sort of just, like, make a move towards the And the as you, you, you make a move toward it, and you get that chill on the back of your neck, almost like something breathing across the back of your neck, and then into your ear, just, ear just kind of like... Then it's and I kind of, I kind of stop. And all of you feel kind of this cold wind blow by. Mm. Beatrice, did you feel that? Beatrice is backing herself into a corner and kind of looking around, scared. Right at that point in time, if, if Beatrice is doing that, I like pull out both of my hand axes. You what pull, you pull out your hand axes. Beatrice <laughs> is in the corner. What do you guys do? I as well take out my great sword. Feeling I have afraid have grown... and threatened. Yes. You all draw weapons. You're standing in this chamber. You're looking across at that opening that you didn't see before. The torch lights kind of shimmering about. You look to the right from whence you came. That opening's gone. Oh, fuck. <laughs> fuck indeed. Oh, fucking great. Well, go on, Cripple. Investigate. Hey, take my torch, since I can't hold two axes and my torch. He makes a good point. Uh, and you hand the torch to a Cripple who has to hold a stick and a fucking torch. <laughs> uh, you can whack with stick. <laughs> you can whack with stick. Yes, you can. <clears throat> Hell, you can uh, whack him with the torch for all I care. Do you, do you go forward, <laughs> honest? And I roll an investigation check. You walk <laughs> forward toward the opening? Yeah. You walk forward toward the opening. You guys, all that you can hear is your breaths, Beatri Beatrice's whimpers, and the, the, uh, the wooden stick hitting the ground as he walks, limping forward. <laughs> You walk in, there's a wall about five feet across, you turn your head right, you see a dark tunnel ahead, and as you turn your head left, you stop and you freeze as you are looking eye to eye with a feminine creature in a white gown, the jaw limply opens, you see teeth, and there's this silent scream, you blink, and she's gone. Whoa, what the fuck? And I, like, you watch try him to, like, literally back. fall back onto his ass, out of sight, and across the back of your neck, Vogar, you hear just. <sighs> I'm still confused on why the cripple fell. What, what did you see? You stand up at this point. And you kind of peek back in at him. I saw a fucking lady in white with a fucking jaw hung off. Fuck. Was she wearing a gown? Yes. It's the same lady. Daragul and my... <clears throat> Honest are having this conversation. You felt that cold chill in the back of your neck, Vogar, and you hear an especially loud whimper from Beatrice, and you turn toward Beatrice, and she's cowered in the corner. There's a feminine figure over her, the jaw slack open like it's about to clamp down on her throat, but then the face turns I... to you with a silent scream and then bursts into a puff of blackness. The torch oh, goes out. 
We're it's in fun. danger. It's it really cold in here. And with that, I... let's take a quick break. Oh, God. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Fuck. It's about to get real dangerous.
Welcome back all from that break. Excuse me. You guys are in a cave of sorts and seem to be seeing some kind of creature. Honest, you walk back into this main room after seeing her. You guys stand looking around. You've drawn your weapons. What do you do? Hmm. Uh... There's another long entrance uh, where he went into and came right back out. <coughs> yeah, there. yeah, there's an opening. Seems like a hallway of some sorts. It goes to the left and the right. Well, a passageway, not a hallway. It's not working stone. Well, should we push on? Does Beatrice look like she's in a mood to even attempt to push on? <laughs> she looks very frightened, very tired. But she's standing with you. She's not leaving your side at this point. Kind of just, kind of rubbing her, kind of like. Mm -hmm. It's all good. It's all good. It's okay. We will potentially find a way out of this. Maybe. maybe kind of. Maybe. I don't. I, I don't know. <laughs> there was a way out. Now there's not a way out. Honestly, Beatrice, I'm not sure. I don't know why you're talking to me like that. <laughs> I've asked you to not raise your voice to me. <laughs> <laughs> so you would Bogar you would keep a pretty keen eye on Beatrice yes you notice and by the way I meant to tell you this in the first place you've made kind of a leather kind of vest for Beatrice with little pockets on it and such that she can okay. help carry some small things okay. in one of the pockets on the top you notice something that you didn't put there Looks to be some kind of a leather-bound book, journal, some kind. Hmm. Like just kind of like as I'm kind of comforting her. I'm like, yeah, you see it. <clears throat> Looks old, I'm dusty. Reach for it. You pull it out, and the dust kind of cascades off of it. <clears throat> Plain leather. It's got a small little, you know, leather flap sitting over a little metal bobble that you can turn to unlatch it. Uh, I have the Thala give this to you, Beatrice. Looks at you, and then kind of looks at it and shrugs. A little goat shrug. A little goat shrug. A little goat shrug. All right, I <clears throat> undo the little dial and open it up. As you open it up, you drop it because you see the face of that creature for a moment, kind of jump out from the pages. And it disperses across your face. Yay. I knew something like this was going to happen. <laughs> it falls onto the ground. And it's sitting open. And it begins to spin in a circle slowly. The pages start to fly by. And then it stops. And we've all seen this now. We've all like seen this. This. <laughs> this has become a spectacle of some kind. Yeah. I don't feel like I did that. Are you sure? No. <laughs> I slightly peed myself. <laughs> Beatrice, don't judge. Do you want to pick that up? No. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> I, I take my walking stick and I poke the book. It moves. As you I, I kind of like step back. It's got to... I like. I begin to. I try to touch the book. You touch it, and your eyes kind of glaze over as you get kind of a vision, like, uh, almost like a glimpse of something, a still image. You see a long black-haired elven woman standing next to a stream just in an instant, and then it fades. She was wearing a white gown. Hmm. Mm. And this one had black hair? 
Yes. At this point, I'm like on my tippy toes, like trying to look good at <laughs> yeah, like, look. You can see scrawling on it. Can I read it at all? You can because Thala has taught you how to read and write Elvish. Hey. 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 <laughs> oh, what does it say? You Let's... pick it up? No, nope, I'm just looking at a glance. <laughs> just looking kinda... at this page. The entry seems from that of uh, maybe a younger girl. Like okay. optimistic, romantic, kind of fond memories. Uh, speaking of a love interest of some kind, an elven man, a warrior from the north. That's all you kind of get on these two pages that are open there. <clears throat> uh, honest, do you think you can flip to the next page? As I'm like still on my tippy toes. <laughs> and you're kind I'm of like, looking at it and you ask Honest <laughs> to flip the page. Uh, 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 I just kind of like, take it. <laughs> you gesture down toward it. And a breeze comes from that hallway as the pages start to flip. And they stop and the book spins. Ah, you did it now. <laughs> You've done it now. <laughs> it slides quickly over to Daragul's feet. Oh, I see the book has chosen me then. And I kind of like irritatedly reach down and like grab the book. You grab it. It's uh -huh. heavy. It's oddly heavy. And as you look at it, it's interesting because the words look elvish, but then they look common. Oh. <clears throat> Almost like they decipher before your eyes. So, like, two-handedly, I kind of, like, lift this book up. Yeah. <laughs> or is it, like, is it, like, so heavy that I it's can't, like, like a get heavy, heavy crack? tome, but it's only the size of, like, a small journal. Mm. There's a weight to it. How heavy was this when you, when you grabbed it? Not heavy at all. It feels like a four-pound tome. I don't what like it, this. I peer down at the uh, the common writing in the book. You begin to read? Yes. You begin to read. Over the next few minutes, you start flipping through the pages, and you see what, uh, what Vogar had seen. Uh, you start to read, and like I said, it's entries that are positive, optimistic, romantic. This woman, this elven woman, starts to talk about her late teen years where she fell in love with this warrior from the north, this elven man. She's then starts to talk about these nightmares that are plaguing her and how she's getting sick and she has these visions and headaches. But then the writing kind of changes and grows more sporadic and it seems that these visions she talks of are darkly kind of warming to her. She's growing fond of them. <clears throat> You kind of get an uneasy feeling as you're reading. Do you continue? I do. She starts to talk about where, why she doesn't really understand what these, where these feelings are coming from. And then she just rambles. She writes in there that she plans to run away soon. Because she's starting to feel as though this warrior from the north is dangerous. And then all of a sudden, the journal just ends. Could I roll history on what this could be? <laughs> sure, sure you could. Like what kind of... <clears throat> maybe you've heard the tale We can before. decipher this is undead, right? Yeah, maybe you've heard the tale. Six minus one's five. <laughs> well, no. Well, you have advantage on this tales. because... Well, you, oh, you cool. have advantage on it because of the church. You would know of these things because you're supposed to know of Six these minus things. one's five. <laughs> With a five, not much, my friend. The, you feel like there's a story in the back of your mind that you've heard before when you were a child. It's just not coming to you. Um, Darn cool. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Oh. I didn't know you read Elvish. No, I I don't. It, and I like show you. I like open the book. It reads in common. You see Elvish. Uh, honest, no. as you kind of peek over and look, you see common. 
I see common too. Bolgar, you, you see you see Elvish, and I hand you the book. <clears throat> I do. You begin to read. <laughs> <laughs> this elven lass. You finally get to a point where you find a name. It's spelled K A T apostrophe T A K I S. Spell that again. <laughs> Kat Takis. K A T T A K I S. There you go. Got it. She starts to talk about when she ran away when she was young, but this elven man found her. They fell in love, but these visions plagued her, these nightmares, but she kind of pushed them to the, to the background and eventually married this man and they had two children. It starts to get very dark from here. She starts to suspect that this man loves her children too much, if such a thing is possible. She starts to grow jealous of this man. Things get very dark. The room gets very cold. She talks about what she's done. She took the two children out to the river to bathe them, but she didn't return with them. She left them there in what she calls their resting place. The lover was outraged, but he wasn't outraged long enough to get through the dagger that was then plunged into his chest. And it ends. I ask uh, either one of the people if they've ever heard of Katakis. <coughs> Katakis. Daragul, Katakis. you have heard of this. There's a I river have. named after this tale. And when you kind of talk about it, it all comes flooding back. This is kind of an old, an old tale that's told to children to kind of keep them in line. But you have heard rumors about the lands that there is some kind of creature that plagues the Katakis River. It is said that many men have gone to sail down that river, but they have gone missing. Women that are on the boats that these men travel on just wake up on the shoreline, not knowing what happened. Boys, <clears throat> we're in trouble. And as you say that, you hear footsteps in that room, that hallway behind you, and children's laughter. You turn. It's almost like they're stepping right in front of you, but then it continues down to the left, echoing down. Let us go. <laughs> so I guess I'm not using my dwarf abilities to attempt to dig through a new tunnel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just walk over with your axes and you start to just kind of chip away trying to get through. You're, you're like, fuck that. Let's dig our own way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Onward. Yay. You come to the entrance. There is left and there is right. Both ways descend into darkness. Me and Beatrice Ooh. are not leading this one, by the way. <laughs> okay. Good do time. I do I see a stone anywhere? Like a stone on the ground? Yeah, like ruble of any kind. Sure. Yeah. Not hard to find. I grab it, and the left way, I throw it as hard as I can down the hallway. You throw it left as hard as you can, and you hear that skipping sound as it comes to rest. Mm. It goes out of sight. Do I see another stone? You do, and as you go to pick it up, the stone that you threw comes sliding back. Hits your foot. You guys all see <laughs> Well, I don't like that very much. You hear the children's laughter from down that hallway echoing toward you. This was very shining, like. <laughs> I pick up the rock and I throw it down the right hallway. You throw it down the right hallway, it skips mm -hmm. and comes to a rest. Some moments pass. Nothing happens. Do 
do we well, want to like do, right. do, do we want to mess with ghosts or not <laughs> i i don't think we have a choice i feel like we are trapped here unfortunately let's just let's just nip it in the bud before it gets out of control i feel like you should leave thank you friend i'll do that now <laughs> come small one cripple let us go you guys go into this tunnel and start <coughs> to head right. Oh, we're going to go left. Towards Are you going the, left toward the children's towards laughs? Towards the laughter. <laughs> yeah. Towards the laughter, you begin to travel. What kind of pace are we going at here? A slow and steady one. Slow Being steady. very vigilant. <laughs> Wins the race. Those, that children's laughter, it gets louder and then duller and comes and goes. You hear footsteps all around you, almost like you hear the tip-tap of something on the ceiling above. You are just being plagued by these sounds as you continue on. The tunnel starts to transition into worked stone. Almost like a dungeon of some sorts, I guess is the best way to describe it. Green mossy stonework. You continue uh, on. Can I sure. make anything out from this <clears throat> work? Uh, um, it definitely looking at it. It is of dwarven design. I think you. Uh, I might be wrong, but I think you have advantage on stone base history checks <laughs> I think because you're dwarves. Do. Uh, he just. <laughs> well, that's why he just kind of knows. Uh, this is of dwarven design for sure. This is a dwarven tunnel. Either that or a dark dwarf tunnel, one of the two. Dwarf, 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 dwarf. A dwarf's a dwarf. Uh, it's kind of like. You guys press on. He said, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> Darago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you continue. Right. Continue on. You're walking. All of the sounds have died off. And ahead, you can see a wooden door. Does Beatrice uh, have a... About 40 feet away. <clears throat> Beatrice what? Ooh. Does Beatrice have a 10-foot pole? She looks at you like and her, shakes like her head no. Like a retractable one? <laughs> she looks at you I've, and shakes I, her head no. I have led all this way through this darkness. Cripple, it's your turn. Go on. Check the door. Stick. With your stick. Yeah. As I limp over. You start to walk across the 40 feet, 10 feet, 20 feet. You're about 20 feet away now. You take a step and the door starts to creak open. You stop. The door stops. Another step. It begins to creak open more. As you step back, the door begins to close. You are upon some sort of threshold. What do you do? I look back at them. You look back at them? Well. You say, well, the door slams open, coming off the hinges and splattering into the chamber ahead. <laughs> oh, that's good. So it doesn't look friendly. Hmm. You hear a... Is that the head? It echoes down. <laughs> Dargul. Did I hear that? Yes. You guys oh. all heard it. Beatrice. Do you think it might be Thala? L Mogar. <laughs> Thala, is that you? I rush forward. <laughs> you begin to head forward. Honest is in front of you. What do you do, Honest? I'm hobbling. I'm you like, hobbling, I'm hobbling forward, after. You forward. You all move forward into the chamber. And sitting across the way, upright in a wooden chair, which is the only other thing in this room, you see Thala. She is tied to this chair. She's looks as though she's been beaten. As you guys all enter the chamber, you hear the door close behind you. That shattered door slams shut. Nice to nice see you. <laughs> Where am I? Do you know what happened? 
as a regard to what? How did you <coughs> get here? She she looks around and looks frightened. Starts shaking her head. I, I don't know. I just went to take a piss. I just went to take a piss. She starts to look past you guys at the toward the top of the room, her eyes going wide. I look up. You turn I look up as well. And you look up. You see that white robed feminine elven thing in the corner of the chamber, arms touching the wall, hanging there, the slack jawed stare begins to crawl slowly down toward the floor. Roll initiative. Uh, 14. It's one second. All right. What'd you get, Mr. Vogar? 14. 14, Vogar. Honest? Uh, 10. 10, honest. Daragul. 4 minus 1 is 3. <laughs> Daragul. Daragul. And Daragul is bad. Interesting. This creature starts to crawl down the... She seems not incorporeal, but there. You hear the bones popping as her arms are kind of hyperextended the wrong way. She's crawling spider-like onto the ground, kind of turns over end and stands, rising her back. Popping, the jaw is just abnormally stretched and dangling, claws, feet that almost look reptilian. Bogar, this creature stands before you. What do you do? Oh, goodness. Uh, 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 within melee? <laughs> she can be within melee if you want it. I uh, know, I, I absolutely don't. This is why I'm <laughs> How, how free are you with uh, basically movement and action? As in, like, I mount Beatrice and sure. beeline towards Thala. Sure. She shares your initiative. You mount Beatrice. Use Beatrice's movement speed to go toward Thala. You can totally do that. Okay. I'll even give you an action on the on on top of uh, Beatrice if you need it. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, basically, I was going to try to uh, get to Thala and get sure her, you get to her. Get it, uh, Probably either like see the action. My other action you can use your action to, to unbound to her if you wanted to. She's tied to this chair by the wrists. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, I will use the. You go over. Her. Yeah, you jump on top of Beatrice. Turns, bounds past Honest and Daragul as you guys draw your weapons. Well, you have your stick. You have your great sword. Gets to the the the, uh, the chair. You pull out a dagger. Slice, slice. Hold on one second. I say I heard something. Go right ahead. Yeah, hold on one second. Go right ahead. That's his turn, so we can go ahead and move on past that. It is now the creature's turn. It starts to move toward you two. You guys are standing shoulder to shoulder. Great sword. Honest, you're, you're there. You're ready as you ever can be. <laughs> the creature starts to flicker and then split into two. Each, oh, fuck. <laughs> each fuck. walking toward one of you, and then it begins fuck. to run into your space and through you out the other side before you can even react. I need both oh, of you to fuck. make a constitution saving throw. <clears throat> 18. Good. Good. 12 plus... 3 is 15? Nice. So both of you past, but you both take three necrotic damage as she passes through your forms. 
she is now beelining, well, both of them are beelining toward uh, Vogar and Thala. By the way, Vogar, as you were un, uh, unbounding Thala, she looks up towards you and you kind of lean over and her head kind of comes across your ear and she says, I, I gave her your names. And she just repeats that, I gave her your names. I'm sorry. With that, honest, it is your turn. Mmm. <laughs> oh, I am not looking pretty at all. <clears throat> you are not, sir. Oh, is that code name for like you're taking it easy? <laughs> is that what that is? <laughs> like, uh, I don't know what my character would do. By the way, uh, Vogar, right. the creatures split into two and ran through them. Yeah. So it was like you guys, <laughs> and not? then and then us, and then they were just like, "Fuck y'all!" So uh, they're coming for you. Heads up. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. Uh, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, honest? Uh, it's, it's so in the basic, because uh, in the basic monk inventory there were darts. Sure, you have darts. Okay, cool. I was gonna ask this, like, since I was where I at, do I have darts at yeah, all? Yeah, it was in the pack that you got. You got your basic stuff that you would carry for sure. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna toss a dart at one of these, uh, at one of them. <laughs> all right, go right ahead. <clears throat> Uh, 15 plus 5, unnatural 20. It hits it, stalls for a moment, and then passes through. Go ahead and roll damage for me, though. That one was... Uh, 5. 5 damage. Alright. Piercing. Yep. Anything else with your turn? Uh, that's all I can do right now. All right, that was honest, Daragul. Daragul. What the? I'm do? going to backtrack towards the one that ran through me. All right, and I'm going to try and hit it. Ooh, eight plus six is was that fourteen? Mm-hmm. Your blade comes down. It stops at her neckline, and then pushes through. No noticeable damage, but you felt resistance. Go ahead and tell mm -hmm. me what the damage is. <laughs> oh, and are you smiting? Uh, I'm not smiting now. <laughs> I rolled a one, so I'm going to re-roll with sure. the Esther, so that's a two, and then I'll roll a three, so five plus four is nine. All right. Anything else with your turn? I don't believe so. I'm going to double check one thing, but I don't believe so. All right. No, go ahead. All right. At the top of initiative is Thala. Thala is now free. She looks at you, Vogar, after saying, I told her your names. She looks you in the eyes. I'm sorry. And it's okay. you, you see something in her eyes that you haven't seen in a long time. Something that she said that she would keep hidden. Her eyes begin to turn red and bloodshot. Her body begins to change as she grows quickly. You guys, Daragul, you see this? Honest, you see this. She changes to over eight feet tall, black, furred, and claws as she pushes Vogar out of the way and begins to slash at these creatures. What the fuck is this? <laughs> what? Natural 20. I was trying to bang this chick last night. What the fuck? <laughs> That's she eight foot tall. <laughs> what the Aren't fuck you is like this? eight feet tall? Yeah, I mean, basically. Yeah, I guess it's good math. It's good math. I guess you're right. You see the claws hit these creatures. They stop for a moment, then slide through. She hits one of them, uh, each of them, once, and then kind of bounds back up against the wall, kind of grabbing you, Vogar, and Beatrice, pulling you with her getting some distance in between you and the creatures. Uh, Bogar, it is your turn. <coughs> and she just pulled me away from She pulled creatures? you away from them and kind of pushed you behind her. Uh, well, I'm just going to ready my action for melee, then. I feel like she is trying right. to protect me, and shit just happened. I'm like... <laughs> you ready your action. I look at both of my actions. I'm, like, 
All right. <laughs> <laughs> With that, it is their turn. Daragul, Honest, uh, Bogar, you can kind of see it. They walk into one another, becoming one, and it walks toward Thala and then turns almost into a white mist that swirls around her body. You start to see lacerations opening all over Thala. Thala begins to scream, but it is not any ordinary elven woman's scream. It's more of a growl of pain. Honest, it is your turn. Shit, I can't. You watched as this cyclone kind of went around her, lacerations open, and the creature became visible again in front of her. Her back is to you. <clears throat> uh... I can't hit her. I yell, we need to escape, and I try to get to the door... And I'm trying to break it open. You go to the door. It's unlocked. You turn the knob. You open it. And you see stone. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. Well. Shit. (laughs) (laughs) I I laugh as I grip my greatsword tighter. (laughs) (laughs) You find this interesting, eh? I'm just like... I'm sorry, Thala, as I throw a dart. You throw it. All right, go ahead and roll an attack. Oh, that's probably a miss there. That's a, that's an eight. Uh, this time it goes right through the creature into Thala, hitting her oh, in the stomach. Uh, go ahead and roll damage on that. <laughs> Damn, dog. It uh, happens. It seven. happens. Seven. Okay. Hey, good, good damage roll. Seven piercing. Good damage roll. All right. Is that your turn? Yeah. Daragul. Yes. <laughs> what do you do? I, so? um, so they're kind of separate from me now. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm going to approach. It's one kinda... now. It's one now. She, right. She turned, yeah, it's yeah, turned into she's, one bigger. She's, her back is to you. She's a okay. turn away. Within a turn. So I could, uh, I could approach and attack with advantage for flanking? For sure, yeah. Okay. She's That's not even paying do. you no mind. It seems to be looking at this black furred creature that just showed up. Fourteen. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and smite this time too. Okay, keep so, the damage separate. For okay. Me. Um, I rerolled a one, so sure. it's gonna be six plus five is eleven plus four, so fifteen on the great sword attack. Okay. And then on our smite <clears throat> damage, it's going to be I reroll ones, so six plus I reroll twos, three. So six plus three is nine radiant. Wow, <coughs> dude! Already I've used that great weapon, ma- we- we- weapon master style, in like eight times. The the sword hits, stops, then goes through, but then the residual energy, the radiant energy, explodes. In this creature, as she screams, she's still oh, there. She's still wicked, there, dude. But it did some did some damage for sure. <clears throat> what would you like to do? I'm gonna can turn that blade in there and can pull it out. <laughs> All right. You turn it in. You pull it out. Is that gonna be mm-hmm. your turn? It is, sir. Thala rolled another natural twenty on her second hit. Can lit. Shit. Dude. Oh, yeah, I do are rolling that on our side, Four. not against. Us. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yes, exactly. Please. Yes, please. <laughs> Thala reaches out toward this creature that is solidified in some sense after being hit with that radiant energy. The claw wraps around the neck, and you hear it snapping. You hear the scream from the creature. Thala picks it up and drags her claws down the front of it, like almost ripping her to ribbons. It looks like a ripped white sheet. It is fluttering at this point, but then it becomes almost ghost-like and kind of escapes her uh, her grasp. Bogar, <coughs> it's your turn. Uh, well, I don't think I'm going to ready my action this time. It almost okay. looks like a horrific version of Casper the Friendly Ghost right now. <laughs> not, not, not so friendly. No. Uh, <laughs> not so friendly. <laughs> Alright, I'm just, just kind of you're like, ah, fuck. And kind of a battle cry into my, my uh-huh. last Zephyr strike. All right. Wielding both hand axes. I'm going to uh-huh. come around. You come around. I'm going to fuck it. Ah, ah. 
All right, make your attack, sir. First one, 13 plus four, 17? Yes. Five, seven, plus four, 11 damage for the first one. Nice. Next one, a nine. Don't worry about that one. Okay. <laughs> so and then the, I yeah. bounce back. Back up. The, the first axe, it hits, stops, but then slides through the form, dealing some kind of damage, hopefully. The second yeah. just goes straight through. The creature backs up a few feet and then re-solidifies, looking beat and battered in a way. A, a ghost fiend chick would, I guess. <laughs> it is now her turn. She turns toward you, Daragul, and Honest. Mr. Random Dice Roller, I need you to roll me a die four. Reroll fours. <clears throat> Looking for a one, a two, and a three. A two. A two. She turns and she looks at you, Daragul, with kind eyes. You can oh. see an actual elven face. She's beautiful. But then it changes to the slack jaws, and you hear a croaked Daragul. I need you to roll for me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, baby. It's going to be 8 plus. 8 plus 4 is 12. You hear the voice. You watch the creature go into Daragul's space. You feel invaded, Daragul. But then all goes silent. And you look around, and you see her no more. Everybody's breathing heavy, looking around for her, seeing nothing. I think, uh, I think I scared her away with my axe. Honest, you turn, and that brick wall, or that stone wall that was there is gone. It's just a hallway. The creature that is Thala begins to shrink down. And then she is just laying there unconscious on the floor, heavily lacerated, beaten, and bruised. <coughs> um, did, I, did I know anything about her ever? Yes, yes, yes. Whenever you first, this that's how you first met her. Know. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. The best way that I can describe Thala to you guys, to get a visual, think of like a black furred, uh, like Sasquatch. Hmm. Eight foot tall. <clears throat> Think of her like that. I always think of the the Lord of the Rings one from uh the, the uh, not Lord of the Rings the Hobbit. Mm -hmm. Think kind of it like of, uh, that. Yeah. Can I make a medicine check to see if she's stable? Yes, you can. <clears throat> it's gonna be fifteen plus. I think it's four. Yeah, you get down. Four, you, you start 19. to look, and the lacerations are rapidly healing. She's breathing okay. normally. All right. So I'm gonna pick her up. Mm -hmm. You pick her up. Mm -hmm. And we're going to walk through this doorway, right? You guys turn and as a group quickly start making your way back through the doorway. Yes? Should we investigate this room first? <laughs> you get to the doorway and you turn and you... Should we investigate this room? You can. <sighs> if you insist. Cripple, go ahead. Make the roll. <laughs> I... You start to look I around quickly. The room. <laughs> you start to look around quickly. Uh, 19. In the heat of battle and everything, you didn't really notice anything other than the chair with Thala in it. This place is furnished now, at least in this moment. You don't know if it was before. You start to look around quickly. You see a lot of odd, odd things. You see a small chest. That's kind of the first thing you see. We'll start with that. Do you need to do anything with that? <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I, I try to open it. You go to the wooden chest and you open it and you kind of take a step back. What you're looking at is a heart and it's beating. What What do you see? A heart. A beating one. That's that. Go on, pick it up. Stab it. Well, that's not getting carried away. I just think what this... <laughs> What, a carry a heart? <laughs> yeah, of course. What does thy do, honest? Um. 
Maybe this is the s source of whatever foul bitch that was. We don't know if she's gone yet. Don't call her. <laughs> That's true. She just disappeared. <laughs> uh, I say we destroy it. Well, go right. on, punch it then. Uh, I take one of my darts mm -hmm. and uh, I, I stab it. So you, you reach in and you touch it with the dart with force. As soon as that happens, the heart turns black and begins to shrink. About the size of a small rock is how far it shrinks. And it's just sitting there, almost like a little black heart talisman. <clears throat> is it still beaten? No. I, I, sh I shut the box. You shut the box. Um, looking about the rest of the room, there was there's a table in the corner now. This is it's almost like a a furnished uh, like uh, study of sorts. On the table, you see a long. It almost looks like a, like a railroad railroad tie, um, mm. a rail, railroad stake. It's about the length of a forearm. It's the only thing sitting there. It's black. Ah, uh, here's a, a, a steak. Mm-hmm. That's what you see. I put it. I stow it in my bag. You, as you pick it up, you feel increasingly all of a sudden very paranoid, and scared. But at the same time, it's almost like the world around you brightens. You put it in your bag. Looking around, it's a bunch of mundane things, old books about history. That kind of thing. Nothing else that you're seeing with that previous investigation role is of worth to you in this time of haste. All right. You rejoin your friends. Friends. Quotations. <clears throat> Anything good in there? I pull the steak back out and I show it to him. About the size of uh, a forearm. Black. Does it middle. look like anything I would know from... Dwarves looks like a like a black metal spike. Yeah, it looks like something the dwarves would use in their underground railroads. Yeah. Hmm. Think we can find any use for it? Potentially. Anything else like this in there? Taking a look around yeah. you, a um, bunch of mundane things, books about history, things like that. The table, the chest with the the heart in it. That's about it. The chair. <clears throat> Alright, let's get the fuck out of here. You guys turn, and as a group, begin to hastily run. The worked green mossy stone turns into unworked cavernous tunnels. You follow it out, and you turn right into that room. You do hear children's chuckles from ahead as you do, but as you come into this room, you see the path of when she once walked, and you continue down that. Eventually, you see the hole in the side of the wall with the water running out, and you guys go out into now the sunlight that you see ahead. As you cross the threshold, you start to hear the ground churning, and as you turn around, you watch as the cave mouth itself collapses down turning into just kind of a mossy earth area. <clears throat> the sunlight is bright. <clears throat> There's no rain. It's getting dry. And you guys are all extremely exhausted. Mm -hmm. Would you guys like to... Where would you like to go? We're going to... For the sake of brevity here, we're going to move forward. Where do you go to rest? <clears throat> just go to the wagon, right? Yeah, you guys, back, back now. Yeah, back you to guys make... push on expeditedly. Our already made camp. And exactly, yeah, we already got a camp made, dude. You were miles away, you thought, from the wagon, oh. but you push south, uh, southeast, and it only takes fifteen minutes before you are there next to the tradeway, and there is your wagon. It's almost as if you didn't walk that far at all. Maybe the uh, the rain had you disoriented. Or maybe there was something more to it. But you all walk into camp, drinking water, eating food, feeling exhausted. 
Fala is sleeping. Beatrice goes into the wagon and just lays down. <coughs> I start to like start smelling my ale. Like, did I make this too strong? <laughs> <laughs> it smells good. And it is strong. I, last thing, I, I got super drunk. I woke up to a scream. All right. the magical right. shit. <coughs> I just figure out something that makes us hallucinate. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, for the sake of this, what would you guys do in this time? You guys are all on. You're, you're all exhausted. This is a legit rest for me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, legit. That's what rest. I'm essentially asking. Um, like, what's the plans? Do you guys pack up and move, find another spot, or do you rest here? We rest here. <laughs> and yeah. you kind of have the, the. Last time we rested here, something bad happened, though. Well, you have the. What's you kind of have a reassured feeling because you see traffic on the tradeway. People coming and going. They wave. You see caravans. You see a patrol. You get a little worried, Vogar, but nothing comes of it. There's passerbys. It seems like a... like an okay day. Hmm. Bef before I go to rest, uh probably start to shave my... uh Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My stubble that's ridiculously Fine. growing out. Yeah, what you guys <laughs> did notice is that he was clean shaven when you met him, but he had about three inches of beard scruff by the time you guys got back. <coughs> and I'm uh, trying to like uh, scruffle through our, my stuff to find mm -hmm. some dye to put. In the... mm -hmm. Yeah, you had the dye was all over your face. The blonde was coming through. You're trying to uh, re up yourself. And Small that's what one. You do. Why so much with the cosmetics? I like the way this looks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dumb, so I'm just going to buy it. And with that, guys, I'm going to assume that everybody finds their rest. One thing of note is you guys get another 450 XP to divide amongst the party. Nice. So 850 total. Honest, you climb into the back across the way from Beatrice and find rest as you were... Severely wounded, tired, and sick of just life at the moment. Find rest, cripple. Vogar, you drink yourself into <laughs> a slumber. And Daragul, you stay up a while, looking about, fiending for that mm -hmm. devil's root. But eventually... That sweet, sweet black root. But eventually you lay down as the sun grows dark and you close your eyes... And in those waning moments before you fall to unconsciousness, you hear something in your mind. Da, ra, go. And with that, that's where we're going to end the session tonight, guys. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. And we can't wait to continue this campaign next Friday. Uh, do join us Monday for our campaign re recap and a discussion about low magic settings. Mm -hmm. Good night, everyone. <laughs>